Are you still ready to praise the Lord? it at once no matter where you go god will surround you the lord will go before you god will protect you no harm and evil will come nigh to you god will give you power over the devil and power over sin and power over your flesh tell the whole world over and over and over and over again that jesus loves you with all his heart and he wants to save you and to save your life you understand jesus is coming and sooner than most of you people think he's coming. I'm not just saying that to get you excited. I'm telling you, he's coming. Let God be true and let every devil be a liar. Clap your hands on me, people. Shout to the Lord. He's able to give me a child. He's able to heal my body. He's able to provide for me. Nobody like you. Nobody like you. Nobody the Lord Jesus Christ. hands to him right here.
Lord. Great are you. Sing it again. Great are you, Lord. Lift it up together. Oh, 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 sing it out. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great. Lift it one more time. How great.
Well, come on on this Monday morning. Give Jesus a great big hand clap. What no eye has seen, 2023. Day two is open. Who came expecting to receive from the Lord today? Praise God. The truth is, I just had all these guys in so I could get blessed and then just saw who else would show up. But nobody got blessed more than me last night, I can tell you that. And um, whether we have it by the end of the week or not to announce, I don't know. But this church, if you thought we've made big moves in 18 months, we're getting ready to make even bigger moves. And uh, yeah. I pray that this would provoke something, these meetings and every person who's here provoke something in your spirit about what's genuinely possible. The Bible says, be followers of them who by faith and patience have received the promises of God. That's in the book of Hebrews. Be ye followers of them who by faith and patience have received the promises of God or inherited the promises of God. So it's one thing to read in the Bible, all things are possible. But then when you start to align yourselves with people in the flesh who are following those promises and receiving them, it gives you a pattern to operate by. And so I know there's many ministers here and business people um, that God's going to radically advance you in the second half of 2023. And this is going to be the launching place. Can you say amen? Well, you can be comfortably seated. I want you, if you have your Bibles, open them with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Verse 5. The Bible says, Jehoshaphat stood before the community of Judah and Jerusalem in front of the new courtyard at the temple of the Lord. And he prayed, O Lord, God of our ancestors, you alone are the God who's in heaven. You are ruler over all the kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and you are mighty. No one can stand against you. O oh, our God, did you not drive out those who lived in this land when your people Israel arrived? And did you not give this land forever to your descendants of your friend Abraham? Your people settled here and built this temple to honor your name. They said whenever we're faced with any calamity, such as war, plague, or famine, we can come to stand in your presence before this temple where your name is honored. We can cry out to you to save us, and you will hear us. Everybody say, I serve a prayer answering God. You will hear us, and you will rescue us. And now see what the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir are doing. You would not let our ancestors invade those nations when Israel left Egypt. So they went around them and did not destroy them. Now see how they reward us, for they have come to throw us out of your land, which you gave us as an inheritance. O oh, our God, won't you stop them? We're powerless against this mighty army that's about to attack us. We don't know what to do, but we're looking to you for help. All the men of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, wives, and children. The Spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men standing there. His name was Jehaziel son of Zechariah, son of Benaniah, son of Jael, son of Mattaniah, a Levite who was a descendant of Asaph. Verse 15, he said, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem, listen, King Jehoshaphat, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Everybody say, do not be afraid. Do not be, afraid. Do not be discouraged. Everybody say, do not be discouraged. Do not be discouraged. You know, that's the two things God told Joshua. Don't be afraid, neither be dismayed or discouraged. Faith and the things of God won't work in that posture. God goes on to rout their enemies. And I'm not the speaker this morning. Uh, Pastor Rodney Howard Brown is. But I wanted to set the tone that what happened was they called an assembly in the temple. And I see that. I was talking with Pastor Rodney Howard Brown about three months ago, saying how that's what people used to do. If they were facing something or not facing anything and just wanted to go forward, they called meetings. They got under the word of God. Now you hear, I'm telling you as a preacher's kid, I never heard the word sabbatical in my entire life till I was about 35. I never heard of any preachers taking a sabbatical. What people would do if they were feeling burnout or in crisis is they'd get in meetings. 
they'd either get in them themselves or they'd call a week of meetings. I know guys that were battling something in their body that called a week of healing meetings just to preach on healing and get their spirit right in that area. When you call a certain type of meeting, which is what no eye has seen is, it's not a church gathering, it's not extra services or an annual uh, uh, celebration of being a year and a half old or whatever. There's no cake being cut. This is a highly prophetic gathering. As they stood in the temple, the Spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men and he prophesied. The students at Zion Bible Institute in the 1970s, where my father went to Bible college and me, they were praying. They were having a meeting like this, singing. And the whole roof of the room filled with smoke. It was the glory of God. My dad said, I was looking at it. And as I looked at it, I hit the deck. And he said, everybody hit the deck on their face, crying and praying. And he said, I heard some idiot yelling out. Give me a million souls, Lord. You know, this is before Reinhard Bonnke. Nobody, the D.L. Moody, maybe three people in the history of Christianity had led a million people to the Lord. Give me a million souls, Lord. Give me a million souls for thee. Give me a million souls, Lord. Give me a million souls for thee. And he said, my dad said it was irritating me because I was thinking, who's this arrogant student that while we're all in this holy moments yelling that out? And he said, when I listened closely, it was me. It was coming right out of my dad's spirit. Give me a million souls, Lord. Give me a million souls for thee. Well, when my dad was in his early 60s, he was at about 600 and some thousand first-time decisions for Christ. And then the COVID lockdowns hit, and my dad had done a YouTube video addressing what was going on in regard to the last days. And he's sitting at about 1.2 million first-time decisions for Christ. One YouTube video... They get about 48, 60 new people saved every day. They're having to build a new building to handle the response of that. So my dad was barely halfway to what the Lord had assigned him to do at 60. And then in a year and a half, he did in a year and a half what was done in, in, in what, 40 years before that, 35 years. God's a God of acceleration. When you get in atmospheres like this, you not only get your assignment, you get the power to fulfill your assignment. Can you say amen? amen? You know, this turnout on a Monday day is going to make me slap the next person I hear say that Americans don't love God. God's judging America. Oh, no. God's not judging America. God sent Jesus to take the judgment that was due the American people. And now it's our time to reconcile men to God before it's the time of judgment. And I'm looking at the people in this room that God is anointing in all their various sectors and spheres to get the job done. If you're one of those people, can you shout a living amen? amen. Say this out loud. I'm in a highly prophetic atmosphere. Many of you have known me for a long time. You don't see me lay on the ground much. And I was there, I, I was thinking about spending the night there. I never understood when I saw people go out under the power, why they're in such a hurry to get back on their seat. You see them crawling. What magic power is back in your seat? Just stay down and enjoy it. And that's what I did last night. I couldn't get up anyway. And I'm still feeling the effects of that, and I'll carry that with me. I, it, it saddens me, and I'm not trying to start off on a negative note, but it saddens me how many people have never experienced the presence and power of God. I like how it said there in 2 Chronicles 20, as all the men stood there with their wives and little ones. There's no children's ministry going on right now. Your children, if you don't train them to be stupid, they won't be stupid. If you give them a crayon to eat during church, then they'll do that. If you get them their own little Bible and notepad, I sat in meetings like this. In fact, not to make myself better than anybody, but to make my parents better than other parents, they wouldn't allow me to go play with my friends out when there was a conference going on. They made me sit right by them, and I received things in those meetings that are carrying me today. You received things yesterday that are going to transform your immediate future and your far-off future if Jesus tarries. I want to show you when I say that we're in a highly charged spiritual atmosphere. What can happen in that type of atmosphere? This woman that you're about to see, this took place on this field. This field was used as this type of function before it ever 
one soccer ball was ever kicked here. The owner of this facility opened it for us to use as a church before it was finished uh, and, and the soccer team was ready to use it. This ground, I actually had that running through my spirit when Pastor Rodney asked the music yes, last night to say, can you sing this is holy ground? We're standing on holy ground. I feel, I'm, I'm grieved in my spirit that 40 and younger have never been in a holy meeting. In fact, we invite you to praise and worship, slow songs, video announcements, quick message, dismissal and prayer. Next group. No, no, no encounter with God. It's one thing to learn about somebody. It's another thing to know somebody. I have counted all these things, brethren, as trash. My high education, everything I was given, that I might know him in the power of the resurrection. Know his power. Have his power on the inside of you. It turns you into a different man. Then Samuel poured the oil on kings on Saul, 1 Samuel chapter 10. And Saul was turned into another man. It'll make you different. And you won't even feel like you're trying to do anything. It's not I, brethren, but the grace of God working through me. But you have to have an encounter with that grace. Any great man or woman of God, when you hear their story, from the one you're about to hear on down the line, Pastor Rodney yelling out with youth for Christ, I want your fire, I want your fire, boom, and then run with it from 1979 or whatever till now. Everybody. There are no great men or women that of impact in the kingdom of God without a heart cry for an encounter with God. And I pray you've come here for that today. Meeting the people at the shuttle station yesterday. United Arab Emirates, Australia, Europe. People flying, and forget, forget there with our transportation secretary, trying to get here from Indiana is the equivalent of getting here from Australia. I mean, you book a flight and just pretty much come to grips with the fact it's probably never going to leave. So to have... This shows, I mean, basically to have the same night crowd in the morning on a Monday at 10 a.m. shows that people did not come here to eat Pramani Brothers sandwiches and watch the Pittsburgh Pirates lose an 11th straight game. People came here because they're hungry for God. What happens in that type of prophetic environment? I want you to watch this testimony, and I want you to key in on it. Testimonies are proof that God's still in business. They show you that God is still doing today the Bible's not a history relic book of what God once did. I am the Lord God and I change not. What I did yesterday, I do today and I'll still be doing tomorrow because I never change. You serve a living, miracle working God and he has a vested interest in blessing you. Watch this. But in January, I found myself completely uh, crippled. I was confined to a bed. Um, I had a, my central nervous system was completely destroyed by years of harmful medications. And I had lost feeling in my face. I had lost feeling to control uh, certain, um, any, anything in my body. I convulsed for months at a time. Um, it got to the point where it was too, uh, too strenuous for three people to take me to the bathroom. So I had, uh, at 33, I was in adult diapers. Pause. And Please don't miss any of these details. It became th too strenuous for three people to carry me to the bathroom. Breathing corpse, 97 pounds, no function. No noise could be on in the room because their central nervous system was blown out. A breathing dead person. Three people to carry to the bathroom. There is no closed case with God. Continue. I was completely hopeless and I was unable to sleep, couldn't feed myself. 
uh, I couldn't read. So one day I was, uh, I was really pressing into the Lord, but I still felt almost like my wheels were spinning, but I wasn't getting anywhere. And so I was on YouTube, um, actually just on someone else's channel, and I saw, um, it said miracle service, just a, a picture, and it had Pastor Jonathan on it. And it just jumped out at me, and I was like, well, you know, I guess I'm going to just, pfft, I'm desperate. Here I am, I'm 97 pounds, going into, at this time, uh, one of the most shocking things was I was also pregnant. And so going into my second trimester, I was 97 pounds, needing 24-hour care. I would turn on the 24-hour broadcast and just stick it under my pillow at night, and I would have Pastor Jonathan screaming in my ear all night. And my mom would say, you know, in the month of January, I slept only 10 hours. And so I should have um, had so many seizures that I would have died. That's what the doctor said. But I had Pastor Jonathan screaming in my ear. And so it was screaming faith and building faith in me. There was a, a message that Jonathan had preached, and it said, uh, he said, um, behold, be today I set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your seed may live. And I, I was carrying, carrying a seed. When we pulled in, there wasn't a parking lot here. And so we pull in and it's all rocky. And I'm thinking, how am I going to roll this stupid thing over here? So I tell my, my person, I said, just park here. She said, that's not a parking spot. I don't care. So we park there, get out. We're rolling up in here. We pull, get into the back and I'm like, oh wow, that's a long walk. So, but I felt the presence of God. I walked in and just looking, I felt the Holy Ghost just like a wall. It hit me and I just began to just tears. And it was like, I just felt the Holy Ghost, like putting my faith in action. And I knew that the Lord was meeting me where I was at. And so I came here and Evangelist Kofi after, um, so during that time I still could, I couldn't clap. I couldn't raise my hands. Um, I couldn't stand during worship. So um, I just sat and I did the, the very best that I could. And afterwards, um, Evangelist Kofi laid hands on me and he prayed that God would expedite the healing work that had already become, the begun. So that was the uh, first week in September. So here I am today and that was the last day that I used a walker. The last day I used a walker. And I drove myself here. God made a way where there seemed to be no way. I drove myself. I carried luggage on the, to the second floor of a hotel. I took the stairs just because I could take the stairs. And I walked here and I parked really far away too. And I walked and look at my shoes before I couldn't even wear shoes because it hurt so bad. That woman is at this conference pushing a stroller with the baby in it. Wheelchair bound, healthy baby, healthy lady. Praise the Lord. All things are possible to him who believes. All things are possible to him who believes. Choose life that you and your seed may live. Not coming here is a choice. Coming here is a choice. You chose to come here, and I hope you chose to receive. I want you to put your hands together for one of God's great servants as he ministers again this morning. Please give a warm Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania Revival Today Church welcome to Dr. Rodney Howard Brown. Hallelujah. 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 Lift those hands to heaven. 
May no one leave this room the same way they walked in these doors. Thank you for what you did last night. But thank you for what you're going to do this morning and then tonight. Father, these are your people. They've come hungry. They've come thirsty. That you would anoint every head with oil. That you would fill every cup to the brim. To overflowing. And that each person will connect with the very divine destiny of reason why you even put them on the planet in the first place. May none of them get to heaven and find out all you wanted to do with them, but you couldn't. But may they all find that out now. That eternal fruit will be produced from each life here, regardless of the circumstances that they've been through, regardless of everything that the enemy threw at them, as the enemy has fired upon them, even from the time of their birth, but this day shall be a turnaround. This day shall be a transformation that will take place, not by the hand of man, but by the hand of the Lord. And that they shall go from this house and the acceleration that shall be felt within their life, their marriage, their home, their children, their grandchildren, their business, their ministry, their church, will be noticeable. And everyone shall see that the hand of the Lord has touched them and they shall know that it is not man, but it is the Lord and they shall give all the glory to he who sits on the throne. And we thank you for that and we give you praise, honor and glory in Jesus' name and everyone said amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You may be seated. Just to let you know, if you do see any banter online between the evangelist or the pastor, Jonathan, and myself, it is all joke. Nothing is ever serious. I'm not joking. He might be serious, but... I'm not joking. All right, that's fine. But for me, it's all a joke. And <laughs> uh, I actually do it on purpose just to see the reaction that people are going to get. And people, oh, my God, and whatever. I think it's funny. I mean, if you don't know our sense of humor by now, there's nothing we can do. God actually, if, if there was a way that we could actually give people a sense of humor, it would be great. <laughs> Unfortunately, many people don't have that. And that really is the reason why they're so depressed. Faces so long, they can eat oats out of the tailpipe of the automobile. <laughs> Look like they've been baptized in lemon juice. And uh, so, uh, you know, I've been, I had to learn this in the early days because I've been criticized for years and it used to take it personally in the early days. And then I stopped worrying about it. It didn't really matter. I've been called everything under the sun. Books written about me. In 1994, I got to England. There were nine, nine books written about me. Whole books. I mean, it's chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter 10, chapter 11, all about me. I was reading, go, wow, I didn't know that, man. I said to my wife, look what I found out about myself. <clears throat> I didn't even know this. Lord have mercy. I didn't know that I was trained under that individual. <clears throat> so, um, praise God, thank God it's sealed. So I know somebody didn't doctor my water, you know. I start speaking five minutes and <laughs> always have a food taster, water taste. Taste this coffee. <laughs> that must have been the worst job to be a food taster for a king. You know what I mean? I give it to the security dude over here. He looks like he's about to attack somebody. I want to throw him a steak every time I see him. It's like somebody give him a piece of meat. He really wants, you know. <laughs> drool coming up the side of it. <laughs> You'd think we were surrounded by Islamic terrorists here this morning. 
Where's the pastor that I met in the hotel this morning? We were passing through. Is from Maryland. Is he here today? Come here. Are you with your wife? Is your wife with you? Yeah, bring her. He told me about the testimony. Let me get the mic over here. And seeing we have testimony, I want to get this testimony because the times for the laying on our hands, and then there's times you'll just be sitting there and God will touch you. And he told me this, um, this testimony. So do you, do, you want to, do you want to tell what happened? Because I want to encourage people. People, people think I have to have hands laid on me. And by the way, I'm going to lay hands on everybody this morning. So you pick the right service to come to. But whether you have hands laid on you or not, you can receive from heaven. Listen to this. Amen. So about two years ago, we were sitting in a meeting in October at Pastor Rodney's. And I've been sick for about 10 years. And uh, they had recently diagnosed me with uh, lupus, which is incurable. And so I had been taking injections and um but every time i was just believing god for healing because i prayed for people that were healed (laughs) and i was so irritated and i was literally just sitting in the meeting and the lord said you're healed and that day i stopped taking all my medication i went to the doctor (laughs) and uh so you were just sitting and you just you just knew you just knew i just knew and literally my husband would have to carry me at times i mean i preached nobody ever knew and He would have to pick me up and carry me because I couldn't walk. There was just so many things that were wrong. And I just felt the peace of God. And I stopped that week giving myself injections. And I was taking um, another medication. And when I went to the doctor, the doctor looked at me and she said, because she had helped me. I had had so many issues. And And she said, well, I don't understand. Keep taking the other medication. But I knew when I left, I wasn't taking the other medication either. I just didn't tell her. And so then six months later, I went back and, and she said, I said, I have no pain. I can walk. I've been, I had started running at that point, which I couldn't do that then. All these things. And she said, I don't understand why you're better. And I said, it's okay. You can just say it's God <laughs> because I told her. And I, she goes, maybe you didn't have lupus. But you got better when you took the injections. And the blood work said this. I said, it's okay. You can just say it was the Lord. She said, so she said, I'm going to cross my, never mind. I'm just going to use praying hands. Don't see me for another year. I was like, okay. (laughs) And literally, I just was believing God and sitting in that meeting. And I just knew to stop taking all my medication. And I just did it and trusted God. And my daughter was healed from celiacs about a year later. She was healed with Evangelist Nick, came, and she got healed. And so just all these things happening. So praise God. <laughs> Come on, give the Lord praise. Amen. So awesome. So awesome. And I mean, in just a moment, the Lord just touch you. you you'll be touched here today, Amen. just sitting in the atmosphere of heaven. All I can say is the, the gift of faith is, is in this ministry. It's on this ministry. And you can't, if your heart is at the place of, I want what God has, you'll get what God has and even more. Beyond your greatest desire. Our daughter had a stroke at 14 months old, old, totally healed, propelled me in the ministry. I can explain time and time again where the Lord has made a way when there was zero way. When man said no, God said yes. And I'm just excited to be here. And God gets all the glory. I mean, God gets it all. And I, I'm excited about what he has for the mid-Atlantic in this area because there's other pastors we've been plowing. I'm telling you right now, the harvest is here. And uh, I'm excited. Bless you. Thank you. Love you both. Bless you. So excited. So excited, Pastor. Bless you. Isn't that awesome? So just sitting in the atmosphere of heaven. Amen. Some people, maybe you came in there. You're 95 years old. You'll leave 45 years old. I mean, just be quick. <laughs> You'll be quickened by the head of Can we move this just a little bit closer? outside of this line here. Otherwise, I'm going to be looking for somebody kicking a ball. And um, yeah, yeah, that's good. I wish I had a ball. I'd knock some people on the head here. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor the ear heard, neither have entered the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Now, when you talk to the majority of people in mainline 
mainstream denominations. Basically, that's their favorite scripture. And it's basically, eye has not seen, ear has not heard. And basically, they will spend their life, their eye has not seen and their ear has not heard. Like if you start talking about the things and the move of God, they'll say, oh, we read about it in history. But I have not seen, you have not heard. When I was a kid growing up like he did, I grew up in Pentecost. So I heard every excuse under the sun. And it was always about the past about what God did back in them days. I thought maybe the Lord didn't like us because he only moved back in those days. I thought, well, that's not right. I mean, I'm, I'm hungry for God. I'm here. How come the Lord loved those people more? And then people would always get up and testify all the old, you know, Pentecostal. I just want to tell you, praise God. I remember how it was 1948, my God, when that wave came through and the glory of God filled the place. If we could just have that one more time, Lord, send a move. Send a move of God. Send a move, Lord. Send it, Lord. Send the latter rain, oh God. Showers of blessings. We we just drip drops are falling right now, but God, send it. Send it, Lord. Otherwise, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. And it just was a wailing session, you know, everybody at the altar, just everybody go, we're, we're going to pray through, we're going we're gonna to go, we're gonna, we'll grab the horns of the altar, you know, we're going to bombard the gates and we just pray somehow, some way, somehow, Lord, send a revival of God some way, somehow, I heard it all. It's always about the past. There's nothing about the past week or even the day. It's always, I remember how the Lord did it. It was always back 40 years ago, you know, back in the days. That, and then when you looked at all the preachers that actually did perform the miracles, the signs of wonder, they're all dead. Everybody's dead. Somebody's got a handkerchief. This handkerchief was used during the heating revival at the AA Allen Tent meetings in Miracle Valley, Arizona. So, oh my God, can I get a piece of that handkerchief? Oh Lord. Ah. <sighs> How you doing? I got a piece of handkerchief from the tent revival. Well, I got one better. I got a piece of the tent. What? You have a piece? I have a piece of the tent. It's about a foot square. Every morning I take the piece of the tent. I put it out. I just dance on it a little bit, feel the anointing. (laughs) You know, everybody's got (laughs) some piece of trinket, you know, this, 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 these, this chair. This chair was in the great meetings back in the 40s. I have a bench in my office that actual fact was in the, in the church that Jonathan Edwards preached in for the great revival of the 1700s. And I, you know, somebody gave it to me and people come sitting there like, like well, it's very uncomfortable. It's a terrible wooden thing. <laughs> but they all sit there and rub the chair as though something is in the chair. You know, oh, I just wish I could have that. I'll, I'll put that in my prayer room. And then every day I'll just go kneel by the bench where they, where they had a revival in 17, whatever. Now, maybe you don't understand that, but in the modern charismatic, and I'm not charismatic. I, I'm a Pentecostal, old time Pentecostal. I'm not nothing to do with, 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 um, uh, where the headquarters are of these different abominations, I mean denominations. It's, <laughs> it's got nothing to do with Missouri. What's that place in Missouri? Springfield. Uh, Springfield. It's nothing to do with Springfield or Cleveland, Tennessee, or any of these things. Any church of God or oh my God or whatever. I mean, I've, I, I love everybody, but let me tell you, God has never put everything that he's done into one group or denomination. He never has. Jesus gave gifts unto men, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And we all come in the unity of the faith. Give him a slab of ribs. And the <laughs> knowledge of the Son of God unto a pre- mature man. <laughs> Can you say that? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Unto a mature person. What does that mean? A person that's producing. A mature individual producing 
doing the works of Jesus. These works shall he do, and greater works than these shall he do. Because I go to my Father. I'm sending you another comfort. I'm sending you the Holy Ghost. He's with you now, but he's going to be in you. Out of your innermost being will flow forth rivers of living water. Yes. Hallelujah. That's not something, well, uh, I just need to pray for that river. Well, I mean, you can, but you have to realize it's on the inside of you. Well, how does it even operate? By faith. Well, I, I don't feel like there's a river in me today. I woke up, it's Monday morning. The last thing I feel like a river. Look, you might even look like a swamp. That means absolutely nothing. To be totally frank with you, there are many, there are many days I don't feel like anything. I, if I went by what I feel, I wouldn't even get out of bed. If I went by how I feel, I call the mortuary. Are you with me? So we don't go by how we feel. We walk in my faith. Can you say amen? We stir ourselves up in the things of God. And we operate by faith and we believe God and we expect we expect God to come. We expect miracles on a Monday. We expect the supernatural on a Tuesday. We expect the glory of God on a Wednesday. We expect the wind of heaven on a Thursday. We expect the rain of heaven to come down on a Friday. We expect the, the, the brucastumbre on a Saturday. We expect the fresh oil from heaven on a Sunday. We, every day when we get up. Nothing to do how you feel or look. When you wake up in the morning, it's not the best look. Hair, for whatever reason, my hair, I don't know why, I sleep, I wake up, I have a perfect curl at the top of my head. I, I don't know how that happened, but my hair will, and what, like a perfect curl, looks like a wave you can surf on. I was thinking of making it actually a new hairstyle for me. <laughs> I thought at least I have a hair at this age that can make a curl at the top of my head. But, uh, so, but it, it's not the best look. How many understand? How many know when you first wake up and you stand and look at yourself in the mirror? You know, God. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in what I do. Then I have to go to a meeting and go help people who... Anyway. Uh, so uh, it's... <laughs> It's important. It's important that you understand. God's never stopped moving. Amen. He's always been moving. Always. It's amazing how denominations feel like they captured God and put him in a box. And he actually lives here. He, he lives behind the curtain. There. God's behind the veil. If you all come and press through the veil... Come through the veil. I thought that looks like a veil. You've come through the veil just to get in here, so you're already here. Amen. And there's always people try to replicate everything to do with the old covenant. I went to one church, and I can't believe they were carrying the, a replica of the Ark of the Covenant. And people were crying. I felt nothing. I looked at it. I went, oh my God, what are you doing? They had the priest with the robe, the ephod, I mean everything. The rhinestones were falling off. So yeah, I'm trying to preach and they're sticking under my shoes. So I'm trying to walk and scrape them off while I'm preaching to get. <laughs> and everybody talks about certain religions that light candles and and, and, you know, pray to saints or whatever. I think the charismatics have much, as much idolatry as everybody else. There's people that actually go to the graves of saints and they've got a thing called grave sucking now. I mean, which sounds terrible, but yeah, you go lie on a grave and suck the, the anointing out of Catherine Coleman's bones. I mean, why seek ye the living amongst the dead? What is, what is wrong with you? Meanwhile, in the earth today, there's anointing in the earth today. You won't find them in those meetings because they don't want to humble themselves to come and sit and get under the spout where the glory comes out and gets touched by the fire of God. They'd rather go to a grave of a dead saint and try to suck somebody's anointing if there was any residue there. Hello? What are you doing? Uh, we sucking grave. You look like the grave sucked you. <laughs> Let 
And I'm, everybody's just running. I'm going, I sucked three graves. <laughs> Trust me, you need to get rid of that. Don't, don't play with that stuff. Well, half of the stuff's witchcraft, and the half of the stuff is new age. Hello? Then you go into the place you can't have a service until the guy blows the shofar to open the heavens. And it's not like I have no problem with somebody who actually knows how to blow one. Are you with me? But it's really not even the ram's horn. It's a kudu horn from Africa, from Southern Africa. And they blow it and it sounds like a cow dying. And I'm very sensitive to music and, and to notes. And I go, oh God, that's the worst sound I ever heard. Who's doing that? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm clearing the air. Where were you when I started the ministry? The word will clear the air. Can you say amen? Yeah. Or oh, worse yet, all the flag wavers. You gotta have flags. What? And they're all different colors. This flag represents this, this flag represents that, and then this one opens up the heavens so the angels can whatever. I'm thinking, what? I come from Africa. We had nobody waving flags. Just me and my wife, and we're in the bush preaching to people. Hello. Try to get down the aisle just to get to the front to go preach. Almost had my eye poked out four times, just en route to the pulpit. And the people don't worship God. They don't worship God. They just wave their flags. <laughs> yeah. I thought your job should be waving in the 747 coming into the airport. <laughs> they never worship God. Have you watched their faces along? They don't worship God. They just all into their thing. And then it goes even worse. I mean, then, then they're wearing their tutus and You've got a 400 pound woman in a tutu dancing across the front because she really wanted to be a ballerina when she was a child and that that didn't happen and so the church has given her a ministry now and all you see is cellulite looks like two raccoons fighting in a glad bag i mean if you're going to receive the anointing you just left you're trying to worship god and you look at this thing I know, there's a lot of places. I mean, I'm about to make a run through Central and South America. That's all they, everybody, that's all they want to do. Oh, we need the anointing. All right, then get rid of, get rid of the, the hippos. <laughs> Don't glare at me. Somebody said, you just took away my ministry. It's not a ministry. There is no ministry. That's not a ministry. Shofar blowing, flag waving, dancing at a tutu is not a ministry. There's no scripture for it. Jesus never went around and Thomas is waving a flag. Thomas's girlfriend that he had on the side Give another donut as she. I said, what are you doing? And we bring the anointing. I said, what, what anointing? I said, whatever anointing it was, it just left the room. Even angels have covered their eyes. Somebody said, I have not seen. I have seen. <laughs> Ear hath heard. Terrible sound. <laughs> I'm a hunter. Bring me my rifle. Let me put that thing out of its misery.
we were, we were in a meeting and I saw this guy walking with this big shofar and he come through and I switched my mic off. I was leading worship and I went over to the usher. I said, go whisper in his ear and say these words unto him. <laughs> so he went out and he whispered in the guy's ear. And the guy took his horn and went and went out. Somebody said, what did, you whisper? what did he whisper in the ear? I said, you go whisper in his ear. Pastor Rodney said, he saw you. If you even look like you're going to blow it. Pastor Rodney said he will leave the platform. He will come down. He will grab the horn. He will insert it <laughs> up your rear end to where you're going to have to have a medical operation to surgically remove it. Amen. I heard the trumpeters did a great job this morning on the horns here. Phenomenal. Thank you. Was anointed. One lady came in with a golf cart. You know, you have the golf cart where you have the clubs in and you can pull it along. And she had all these flags and they were all, she came with the flags. Somebody said, you didn't. You didn't. I did. I did. The usher whispered in her ear. She took a golf cart and off she went. Now we're not playing church here. We're not looking to accommodate the flesh. We're not looking to accommodate what some people think is the anointing. A lot of this stuff is an excuse because people don't have the power of God, so they look for everything else. You can't go back to bring Old Testament things into the house of God under a new covenant that's signed and sealed through the blood of Jesus. Are you with me? It's the same reason for going to Jerusalem to go pray at the Wailing Wall, as though you're going to get better prayers answered there. I've been there. I've stood there. I, I went underneath the wall. I went to the closest place to where the Holy of Holies was there. That felt nothing. It was dank, musty smell. The more anointing going to that wall there and praying with that wall. It's idolatry. Why don't you get a, a figurine of your favorite preacher and just blow his belly out, some you wouldn't need to, and then just rub his belly every time. I know this, this is upsetting to some people, but why do we have so many idol worshipers here? No wonder I have not seen, you have not heard. No wonder. Because the excuse for no anointing is to try to find something in the Scripture and then replicate that. Hoping that somehow... Thank you. I use it as a paperweight. You can either have the fake or you can have the real. There's a lot of ministries that carry nothing, but let me tell you, they're parasitic in nature. They are opportunists. They go around and try to ride the back of some revival that's taking place by somebody who carries the anointing. And I could, I could mention whole scenarios to you right now. There's certain things that have been happening in the body of Christ and people think, oh, that God carries anointing. He carries absolutely nothing. Let me tell you right now, all he does is hijack what other people are doing. I'm so glad that we don't have to hijack one thing. I'm so glad you, you, people that carry the anointing, you can take them and drop them in the middle of nowhere and just leave them there for a couple of days. And let me tell you, you'll start to hear a rumble and there'll be a shaking that begins to take place. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The moment you realize that, everything changes. The moment you grab a hold of that, everything changes. Freely you have received, freely give. But if you haven't received, you can't give. You'll say silver and gold have I none and I have nothing else either. <laughs> do you want the real? Or do you want the pretend? Do you want the real or you want the fake? Amen. 
Somebody said, yeah, but we're trying to grow the church. And there was a group, a van of ladies that came in with flags. Show them how there's another church in the city. Maybe they can go help. Because you accommodate that. You start accommodating that nonsense. You'll accommodate Jezebel. And her friend Jingle Bell. I always joke about this, but it's almost like pastors feel like it's their job to try to find a position for people in the ministry. Hey, brother, great, great to have you here. We'd love to have you be a part of the church. Well, I, I have a special ministry. You do. What is it? I play the kazoo. <laughs> God's really anointed me. And when I play the kazoo, it's prophetic. The kazoo. How many have seen a kazoo? All right, show up Thursday night. We're doing tryouts for the band. And then you have to, this is now, at the time of the offering, we have Brother um, Sam Smith, who's going to now play the kazoo for us. Great. I need this like another hole in my head, you know what I mean? <laughs> All right, I'll stop picking on people. Yep. Somebody said, if you carry on like this, the, the crowd will be reduced so you'll pray for less people. That's part of the reason why I do what I do. So that... So let's read that again, shall we? But as it is written, I have not seen no ear heard. Neither have entered the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him, but, but God, and what say, but God, has revealed them unto us by his spirit. God has shown them unto us by his spirit. And everything he shows is always based on the word, not somebody's theory. A theory is a supposition based on the ignorance of the subject under discussion. A theory is a supposition based on the ignorance of the subject under discussion. Well, I have a theory. Well, it's not the word, so it doesn't work. But there you go again. So is the word. Well, I have a special interpretation of the word. Can't you read the scripture on my mask? It says here, and I want to read this to you in the Amplified. But on the contrary, as the Scripture said, what the eye hath not seen, and ear hath not heard, and is not in the heart of man, all that God has prepared, made and keeps ready. Made and keeps ready. That means it's already made, and it's already been kept ready for you. For those who love Him, who hold Him in affectionate reverence, promptly obeying Him and gratefully recognizing the benefits He hath bestowed. Yet to us, God has unveiled and revealed them by and through His Spirit. And I love this, for the Holy Spirit searches diligently, exploring and examining everything, even sounding the profound and bottomless things of God, the divine counsels and things hidden beyond man's scrutiny. So certain of these things are hidden beyond man's scrutiny. For what person perceives, knows, and understands what passes from man's thoughts except the man's own spirit within him? Just so, no one discerns, comes to know, 
comprehend the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have not received the Spirit that belongs to the world, but the Holy Spirit who is from God given to us that we might realize and comprehend and appreciate the gifts of divine favor and blessings so freely and lavishly bestowed on us by God. That's already been done. It was done through Calvary. It was done through the cross. It was done through the resurrection. It was done through Pentecost. It's already done. He doesn't have to come back and do it again. He doesn't have to hang on the cross another time. He doesn't have to come so the veil of the temple can be torn again. He doesn't have to come so there's another upper room. The first upper room still works. The first upper room is still in effect. The first outpouring of Pentecost is still in the earth today. You just have to get it for the first time. And once you get it, then you'll carry. You'll be carriers of the outpouring of the Spirit of God because He pours His Spirit out to pour His Spirit in, to pour His Spirit out. So it rests upon a vessel, a man or a woman of God that will totally yield himself to the Lord that God fills up and then they go be poured out to a lost and dying world. That's what it is. Hallelujah. And we sit in these truths forth in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Holy Spirit, comparing or combining and interpreting spiritual truths with spiritual language to those who possess the Holy Spirit. But the natural non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome or admit in his heart the gifts and the teachings and the revelations of the Spirit of God. For they are folly, meaningless nonsense to him, and he's incapable of knowing them, of progressively recognizing and understanding and becoming better acquainted with them because they are spiritually discerned, estimated, and appreciated. So you can't come here. It doesn't matter what your IQ is, as intelligent as what you might be. You cannot grasp these things. It comes to the heart of an individual that's hungry and thirsty. But the spiritual man tries all things. He examines, he investigates, inquires into, questions, discerns all things, yet he himself is to be put on trial and judged by no one. He can read the meaning of everything, but no one can properly discern or praise or get an insight into him. To a person full of the Holy Ghost, you will always remain a mystery to people. They will always be trying to decipher and discern. And many come around and they think they know you, but they don't know you. I saw that happening when the revival broke out in 89, 1989, in the last century in upstate New York, in a place called Clifton Park. On a Tuesday morning, when the glory of God came in like a cloud, like a wave of the sea. I was preaching like I am right now. And a lady sitting about four rows back, she started blinking. She was looking up at the ceiling, just blinking rapidly. I thought, what's wrong with her? She's like having some kind of a seizure. So I'm always cared for people. You know, I look and said, lady, lady, are you okay? She said, I'm fine. I said, what's wrong? She said, nothing's wrong. But while are you preaching? She said, this thick cloud of fog come into the place. She said, I looked up, I couldn't see the lights. It reminded me, she said, of growing up here on the eastern seaboard of going outside at six o'clock in the morning, there's that thick fog. You can't even see your hand in front of you. Well, I looked, I saw the lights and saw the thing. I didn't see anything, but I felt it. And as I was speaking, it was 10 minutes into the message. In those days, I led the worship on the keyboard. So I'd come off the keys and open the scripture and begin to preach from Luke chapter four. And Jesus returned the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and they went out of fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in the synagogue, being glorified of all. And he came into <clears throat> his home place. I didn't realize as I was reading that, that I would be doing that every day for the next 14 years. 
because everything changed that morning. The atmosphere of the room changed. Bodies began to fall out under the power. Nobody's even touched it. And people just begin to slide out of the seats into the floor. Some are weeping, some are crying, some are filled with joy. And the crowd diminished, not out of the door, but into the floor. There wasn't that many people, but about maybe a hundred people in that morning service. But I'm talking about 1989. And I, in my mind, you know, I looked at all that. I thought, boy, this is, I'm 10 minutes into my message. There's an upheaval. I said, what are we going to do with this? I said, Lord, people are going to mock me because of the joy. But there was many people weeping as there were people filled with joy and people falling under the power. The Lord just said, let me touch the people. Preach to everybody that's looking at you. He said, treat them like their heads above water and preach them till they're under the water. So that's why I kept preaching. People said, why do you keep preaching when power of God's falling? I said, well, there's still people looking at me. So as long as there was a head bobbing above the sea, wow. you know what I mean? I just keep preaching until everybody went under the water. Wow. Amen. Amen. There were some people, didn't matter how long I preached, they never went under the water. It's the Bowie family. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, sister Bowie. And then in the height of what God was doing, I'm standing there and people see me pause, but God speak to me. The Lord's showing me things to come. Right in the middle of the anointing, things that, are, that everything we're doing today, the Lord had spoken to me back years ago. We pulled the tapes, even from the early days of the River Church where we started back 1996. The 1st of December, we started the church. 575 people showed up the first Sunday. And I, I was going through the archives. I got archives, I was looking at them the other day from 2001 when we moved into our sanctuary. And I just, I went, oh, Lord have mercy. And I said, my wife, come listen to what was being said. Everything that was being said in 01, 02, 03, 04, 05, it's all happening now. But people that were listening when we said those things just thought, we, you know, pastors just out there, you know. No, no, you were out there in the Spirit and you were speaking by the Spirit of God, giving direction to the church, which way God wants to take the church. That's why it's important. I said this last night, don't go to a dead church. I don't care what place you grew up in. You better be around the anointing. You better, it would behoove you. Listen to me. It would behoove you to move to wherever the anointing is and plug in. And if you are a pastor here, you better get the anointing. I don't care what it takes. You better get the anointing and put that anointing in your church. Somebody said, well, you mean every service people got to lie down, roll in the ground? No, but there better be a fresh word from heaven. Are you with me? And you better speak only what God tells you. Strip away all the stuff of the flesh. Strip away all the other stuff that you picked up. Because you pick up a lot of stuff by association. So you can pick up the traditions by association. No, you don't have to have a service, every service, everybody falling down and rolling on the floor. It doesn't have to be a service like that. Because as a pastor, you have to preach pastoral messages and minister to people. There's certain things you have. To. Yesterday, I think we took in 180 new members. So we welcomed them into fellowship. Amen. Prayed over them. And then we took in another new member, just been born. Had to dedicate that baby. There's certain things you do as a pastor. Amen. Sometimes you've got to do a funeral. People do die. Amen? Well, our funeral's a little different. We give altar calls at our funeral. Because there's a lot of family that aren't saved. So we always talk as though we were speaking from the grave. Your cousin Jimmy. 
He's now on the other side. Will you ever see him again? If you don't know Jesus, you'll never see him again. Better just look at his photograph here today. Because that's the last you'll see of him. And then give an altar call. People get saved. Amen. We've even had people get saved at weddings. The couple would like me to address you right now before I pronounce them husband and wife if you don't know Jesus today. Somebody said, you can't do that. You can do anything that needs to be done whenever it needs to be done. Are you with me? Yes. We use every method to win souls. If that's the only, somebody said, Pastor, half of my family, yeah, they're a bunch of heathen. I'm getting married today. This is the only reason why they're coming because I'm getting married. Please, can you slip in all to all? No problem. Because the people getting married want soul saved. If that's the only time your family's coming, get them saved. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We don't send them out, otherwise they miss the whole program, you know. But we at least lead them in a prayer to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Somebody said, that, that just ruins a wedding. It doesn't. The couple are so happy. My, my, my cousin and my aunt and uncle who were never saved, just got saved. Use every opportunity around the church to get people saved. Amen. The only reason I believe that we're still going with revival is because we've kept it pure. Because there are many other places that had revival for five years, six years, and the whole thing fizzled out. And I know there's some people still come to me. I remember the 90s. I said, I'm glad you did. I, I've forgotten the 90s. I remember now. I, I remember 2023. The greatest moves of God that we've had ever happened in 43 years of ministry have happened this year. The greatest moves, outpouring of whatever. Yeah, there were great manifestations of the power of God back then, but it's happening right now. Are you with me? Somebody said, well, how would you know? I was there then. I'm here now. <laughs> how would I know? <laughs> I know. A lot of times when people refer back to a time period, because that's when they first encountered the Spirit of God. But you're supposed to go from glory to glory. You're not supposed to be hanging on a touch from God that happened back in 1949. His mercies are new every morning. He pours out His Spirit every single day. Fresh touch from heaven. Hungry and thirsty. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We, we dedicated our sanctuary 22nd day of January, we opened the new sanctuary, dedicated. In the first week, we saw the dead raised. Head of my security fell over dead. I didn't even know who it was. I just heard this gurgling sound. I run back, I flipped him over, and I felt I could feel his weapon. I thought, oh God. But he was, he was gone. It was a death rattle. And I switched my mic off. I said, you foul spirit of death. I rebuke you. Jesus' name, and I shouted in his ears, Life! 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 And they drug him out. One of the medical doctors ran and said, Get out of here. This is not your jurisdiction. How do you suddenly think that suddenly you're going to do anything? Go sit down, please. We dragged him out. He was flatlined for over five minutes. Pastor Allen grabbed him and broke his sternum. And we just crushed him, split the thing. <laughs> they put him in the ambulance and they took him to Tampa General Hospital and they managed to resuscitate. He was resuscitated, was disorientated. We talked to him later. He said, all I heard was pastor speaking, speaking to me, life. That's all I heard. Life, 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 life. And so, I mean, within four days, they let him go home. He was wanting to come back to work. He's head of security. I said, no, you're not. 
I said, take his co key card and neutralize it. Take everything away from him. You're staying home. He called me up. I need to get to work. I said, you did die. You actually died. You died. Stay home for six weeks. I will not allow you on the property. You died. I want to come back to work. No. You died. Take a break. So that happened the first week of the dedication of the building. And then certain things that God did, which I don't want to talk about right now because then I'll, I'll get messed up. You know, when the glory of God just come in there, even that, that Monday morning of the second week, it was the same as what was in 89. Exact same thing. I felt it. And the whole atmosphere adjusted. So I'm not comparing. I'm just telling you where, where it started. Even though from the time the Lord touched me in 79, I saw smatterings of that throughout the ministry. But it was from 89 when there was a constant flow of the Spirit of God. And then what I began to find out, there was always the, 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 the religious people that wanted to build the dam to stop the flow or to find the banks, of what they call the river of God. We need to have banks to the river of God. I said, so that's what your job is? You're, you, you're a bank? You're one of the sides of the river of God? I said, I'm telling you, this river is much bigger than you can even handle, my friend. You cannot take this river and put it into a denomination or one group. The river is the river of God and it flows and it goes where it wants to and you're not going to control it and you're not going to put some kind of stipulation upon it. You're not going to charge money for it. Are you with me? That's why a lot of anointings get tainted because they attach money to it. For your certain gift, you can get a special meeting with the man of God. You'll shake hands with them, and then he will give you a prophetic word. And I can go on and on about this. I mean, I tell you, that's just merchandising, the anointing. You know, I've had pastors call me and say, listen, we'll give you 100000 if you come preach. I said, you, <laughs> sorry, can't come. One guy called me and said, listen, I have a friend. He's uh, dying. He said, I'll give you a million bucks if you pray for him. I said, he's going to die. What do you mean? I said, I ain't coming to pray for him. I said, use the million, fly him to me. He said, he can't move. I said, then spend the money to fly him to me and bring him to where I am and I'll pray for him for free. Can you imagine? Where are you going, Pastor? I'm going to go pray for a guy. He's giving me a million bucks to go pray for the guy. I wouldn't even be able to sleep at night. How do I talk to the Lord about that? Hello? There's speakers that demand huge amounts of money before they even come. You have to wire it into the account before they would even get on their jet to come. I travel throughout Africa and they'll pay, you don't even know. If I mentioned the speakers, you would know exactly who they are. And they have to have money. I go do it for nothing. And they give me nothing, which is fine. God's of my source. Can you say amen? The Lord is my supply. But they, they've said, if, if that money is not transferred to us now, then we're not coming. And even all the Christian musicians and singers, I can write a book about it. When we went to Madison Square Garden, there were certain ministers. I had to send them the honorarium in advance before they would even come get on the platform. And none of them bring a crowd. They didn't tell anybody that they're coming to be with you, but they wanted to guarantee. One guy said, I want you to guarantee me this amount of money when I come. I said, fine. I want two dead raised. I want seven blind eyes open. And I want 14 wheelchairs. If you can guarantee me that, then I'll guarantee you that. Uh, I can't guarantee. Well, then I can't guarantee either. The power of God and the anointing of God is not for sale. Can you say amen? amen? He 
is free. It comes to the hungry. It comes to the humble. It comes to the thirsty. To the hungry calleth now. Come and dine. Come and eat. Come and eat at the table. Come and eat of the heavenly bread. Come and drink the living water. Come and drink the new wine. Come and have your head anointed with oil and your cup filled to the top, to overflowing. The Master is calling. Jesus is calling. Come. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'm going to give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Come, 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 come. You that are hungry, you that are thirsty, come. He calls. He calls. I feel that no one is so strong here right now. As strong as I did in April of 89. <laughs> I feel the anointing. Isaiah 55 and 1. Wait and listen, everyone who's thirsty. Come to the waters. He who has no money, come. Buy and eat. Yes, come and buy priceless wine and milk without money, without price. Simply for the self-surrender that accepts the blessing. Why do you spend money for that which is not bread? and your earnings for what does not satisfy, hearken diligently unto me. Eat what is good. Let your soul delight itself in fatness. And I love this in the Amplified, the profuseness of spiritual joy. Incline your ear, submit, and consent to the divine will, and come to me, hear, and your soul will revive, and I will make an everlasting covenant or league with you, even the sure mercy, kindness, goodwill, and compassion promised to David. It's free. Can't earn it. It's not based on your reputation. These people even here, this morning, you feel like, well, maybe the Lord will just touch certain people. I mean, God knows what I've done. God's not touching people based on what they've done. He's touching people based on what Jesus has done. God's not touching people based on how, how you can earn it. How do we suddenly go about earning what He has so freely already granted unto us? It's free. Dear brother, step right over here. Step right over here. Close your eyes, lift your hands. Fire! From the top of your head to the very soles of your feet. Now, Lord, grant unto him that which he's cried out for, and let it be his portion. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is no respect of persons. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. God is looking for people that he can show himself strong in their behalf. How do you think he found me in Africa? Just an African boy crying out to God. Lord, I want to be used of you. Lord, I want to do what you want me to do. Lord, I'll go where you want me to go. Lord, I'll say what you want me to say. Lord, I'll be what you want me to be. Not my will, but thine be done. 
I'm yours. Take me. I come just as I am. Take me, Lord. You cry out to him. He will come and he will find you. Just like the prophet of old that said, Woe is me, I'm undone. I'm a man of unclean lips, but an angel took a coal from off the altar and placed it upon his lips. Something happens when he comes and he touches you. Something takes place. You step out of the realm of the natural into the realm of the supernatural. I will tell you this, you're not going to fit into every place. People will classify you to be as a strange person, some oddball. But I was classified that before the anointing even came upon me. Are you with me? So it doesn't really matter. If you're looking for fame or fortune, you don't want the anointing, you don't want the Holy Ghost, because you'll lose your reputation. Let me tell you right now, if you even had one or you thought you had, whatever you thought you had, you'll end up losing. But Jesus said, if you lose your life for my sake and the gospel, you'll find it. You'll find it. We lay our life upon the altar. Can you say amen? amen. Step right over here, dear brother. Are you together? Step right over here. What do you do? Firefighter. Firefighter. Well, you're going to light fires. <laughs> you're going to light fires. Fire! You'll light fires everywhere you go. You'll fight fires in the natural, but light fires in the spirit. There are a lot of firefighters in the spirit. They put the fire of God out. Everywhere the fire's burning, they go and they put it out. They bring their religious fire hydrant extinguisher to spray it out because it doesn't meet the approval of the deacons. It doesn't meet the approval of the Sanhedrin of the powers that be. You see, if your cry of your heart was, oh God, touch me today, he'll touch you. He'll touch you. It doesn't matter where you're sitting. I'll tell you if I could just get a front row seat. Wow, there are people on the front row that are not going to get touched here today. Hello. No matter where you're sitting, if you're hungry for God, He will come find you. Come and touch you. Just step right up here. Lift your hands. Father, touch her. Kneel from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. That's it. That's the power of God going right through you. Just let it go right through you. Now somebody said, well, what, what's the Lord doing? We don't know. You don't know what happened to Pastor Jonathan last night, but he was out for a good while but I'm sure you'll see the results of it in the next couple of months because that's what happens when the touch of God comes. Are you with me? <laughs> Love you too. Somebody said, I'll just pick a seat out by the sound booth. I'll be safe out there. I know there's certain people that hide in these meetings. Now, some of the other speakers, you don't need to. They'll never find you. I'm not talking about this place. I'm talking about in other cities. Another realm. Yes. 
another realm, Father, greater capacity upon her <laughs> to receive everything that the ministry is walking in the next six months. In the name of Jesus, we speak that even now. The gift of faith and the anointing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, to do exploits. You know, right now, if, if, if you want to know, somebody said, what are you feeling right now? I feel like I'm in a giant shower. I feel like I'm in a rain shower. Above my head is this huge um, whatever. Uh, you, know, the, 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 you know, the shower, whatever. You know what I mean? Do you, do, you, do you know what I'm saying? And it's like I'm covered in this rain right now. I can feel it just coming on me. Oh, it's all just raining down. It's raining. Now. Some people rain down. Rain. Yeah, it's raining. It's raining in here. Get rid of your umbrellas. Take. Get rid of your 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 raincoats. Your Macintoshes. Let it rain down. Come here, dear sister. Where are you from? South Carolina. What do you do? Fire from the top of your head to the you. Where are you from? South Carolina. Are you together? Yes, sir. Ha, 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Thank you, Lord. Now look at me, look at me. These belong to you. The hand of the Lord is upon them. So don't feel at any moment, I'm stuck with these two. But the anointing of heaven shall be upon them in a great way. And right sitting by you shall be two anointed that God shall raise up to impact many people. So what you, your assignment is very important. And you speak the word into them I see the hand of God as I was walking towards them. I saw the hand of the Lord upon both of them. And so you're actually carrying two powerful ministries right here. Are you with me? So don't ever say, well, I'm in the background, I'm whatever. No, you're not. Because people will see what's going to come forth in the days and weeks and months to come. Amen. So you rejoice. You have a very important part of what God's doing. And you'll see it. It shall be made manifest. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. That goes for other mothers here who feel like you're stuck with your kids. I'm just stuck in the background with the kids. They're always crying and fighting and pulling each other's hair. And I feel, oh my God, help me, Lord. I'm going crazy. No, you're not going crazy. You're not going crazy. That wooden spoon from the kitchen works. You're not going crazy. Upon the cheeks, the lower ones. Yea, verily. Paradanga. So profonde lisi, prepetele suto. Caradanda redisto, profonde nista. Prepota saprata. If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, so quicken and make alive your mortal body. So quicken. So he runs a race till he's done. Yes, yes. You run till you're done. Yes. Amen. And you'll know when you're done. And you call everybody, have a party and go home. Amen. Just get a bucket, call a party, kick the bucket and go home. <laughs> Amen. When you're done, praise God. So you can tell people I kicked the bucket. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. 
Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How many mothers received that word? Somebody said, well, you didn't give it to me. No, I'm giving it to mothers here. How many mothers received that? All the moms, stand up here right now. You received that word? Yeah. Yeah. Look at Jonathan's mother. And his father, let me just say something about his father. His father can pretend like Jonathan is out there. His father, Jonathan's a chip off the old block. Let me tell you right now. Everything Jonathan says is does is what his father thinks. Because I know his father and I've been with him behind the scenes. And everything Jonathan does is exactly his father. His dad always trying, you know, my, my, my son. I said, no, he's just like you. Just like you. But you have to understand the Shuttlesworths. Because they're all the same. They all try to be different, but they're all the exact same. You just have to be, you just have to be with them. I know them. I know them well. I love them. So raise your hand, all the moms. <coughs> Father, a special anointing upon them today as they raising up these young ones to serve you that out of their house shall come mighty men and women of God and you shall use those kids in a powerful way to carry the anointing. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be. Blessed be. Blessed be. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be. Blessed be. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Blessed be. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. All his granddaughters here today. Taylor, stand up. Just turned 21 yesterday. Yeah. We got engaged to this young man. We should have made him work seven years. I watched her when she was a little man, three years old, under the anointing. I don't know if we have that on a hard drive when I prayed for her. Do we have it? Do we have it? Pull up the clip where she was three years old and I laid hands on her. Actually, in fact, I didn't even touch her. The power of God hit her. You get the kids under the anointing. That's why what pastor said, kids are sitting chewing crowns. <laughs> and people wonder why they get... Anyway, we'll just leave that alone. <laughs> it's important. Praise God. Well, I, I didn't realize I was actually praying over your kids, you know, because I don't really see them all. You know, we don't see everybody together, so I'm trying to relate. And your wife always comes different styles and whatever. So I was 
didn't know, I didn't want to say, and I wanted to check she wasn't babysitting, you know what I mean? I thought it would be, be wrong. So, but you handed, the hand of God's on these ones, amen. Praise God. I didn't do that because I knew it was Kofi's kids. I had no clue who they were. They were just kids. Amen. Amen. That's why I said, are these yours? You know, you give a prophetic word to the babysitter. <laughs> Somebody said, well, God would tell you. Well, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't tell me. Amen. I mean, if we have it ready, just, just play it. Whenever ready, just go ahead. You'll see me call her out. You've got to get the children under the anointing. Got to get the kids under the anointing. That's what Youth Week, Kids Week is all about, which we, now they tell me over five, five and a half thousand young people are coming here in two weeks' time. Got to get them under the anointing. Have to, have to get them under the anointing. Have to. Thank you, Lord. If you don't have it, just give me a thumbs down. I don't even know where they went. There must be some. Oh, there it is. Go play it. You see that, my baby? This is my grandbaby. Come here, sweetie. Come. Close your eyes. Lift your hands to Jesus. Fire. Put it on the Lord. Listen, the Lord is on this kid. I'm telling you right now. The power of God's on this kid. She loves it. I see the Holy Ghost coming on her. I can see the Holy Ghost come on her. She's only three years old. And the anointing's on her. This is the best time to get the kids when they're this age. The power of God's on this little one. My God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Stay with Granny. Stay with Granny. Stay with Granny. Stay with Granny. If she wanted to come pray with me at that moment because that was what she was into. She had to pray. We were, we, were, we were traveling and I was in Utah and she comes to me. She said, Pop-Ups, I need to preach tonight. <laughs> and I only had one service. And, and the problem is at those times, there would be preaching about David and then suddenly it would be Cinderella. So I could never, <laughs> I could never, because there were two worlds blurred there for her, you know. And so at the, I never got her to preach that night or say anything. And she was very upset. After the service, I get in the back room and she looked at me. She said, Pop Ups, God told me that I was to speak tonight. And the Lord told you, but you did not listen. <laughs> Great. But I mean, even when she was five, she would stand there, she'd carry the little rags and walk with me. And she, she'd say to me, the people over here, they receive the people over there, they don't receive. She could see the ones that were receiving and not receiving. She said, the people over here pop up. They, they open to receive from the anointing. The people over there, they're not open. And it's not about falling down. If it was about falling down, we could all come in here at 10 o'clock. We just go one, two, three, we all fall down. And then we just get up and go off. In all the years, there's no telling how many people we've laid hands on. Into the millions. I know that 1995, for whatever reason, we counted, we never did it before or after, but we had 1.2 million in the services in 1995. And we probably laid hands on minimum of 300,000. It could be half a million that year alone. Somebody said, well, would you want to do that again? There's probably 450,000 people I probably should never have laid hands on because they weren't there to receive. They were there to come test out to see if I could knock them in the floor. Pray for everybody, every service, lay hands on every single thing. Yet here's a lady healed of lupus just sitting in the service.
So you have to educate yourself on the subject of the anointing. And if you weren't here, who was not here last night? Who's here for the first time today? Wave your hand. Look at that. Can you put the QR code up for my books? I'm going to give away 22 of my books right now. And in there are the books on the anointing. My first book called The Touch of God. You can scan that. Download it onto your cell phone. Do that. So you can learn about the subject of the anointing. The book, Seeing Jesus, it really is, which is very important. The curse is not greater than the blessing. So people don't walk around, I've got a generational curse. That's to the third and fourth generation, the blessing to a thousand generations. Rather have life after death. Kingdom business, the new book, what happens when Jesus shows up. This present glory, sowing and famine, the school of the Spirit, manifesting the Holy Ghost, what gifts you bring the King, fresh oil from heaven, how to increase and release the anointing, come and revival, the anointing, many book, the touch of God, the gifts of the Spirit, the coat my Father gave me. And then the books that explain everything going on in the planet, killing the planet, killing Uncle Sam, the phantom virus, and social under the microscope. That's my gift to you, everybody here today. You can scan that. And if you don't, if you don't know how to do that, ask a four-year-old. Maybe the ushers have some of these you can take home. On the back, the awesome Spanish uh, books and stuff on there. I don't have enough. We are translating all our stuff into Spanish and Portuguese right now. So who wants some of the stuff in Spanish? Two lonely Hispanics <laughs> that swam the Rio Grande. All right, get them one of these cards. If you'd like one of these to take home, raise your hand, I should get one to you. Just raise your hand, I should get one to you. And you can give this away to somebody as a gift. 22 of my books save you carrying them home in a suitcase. Raise your hand, I should get you one of these. Ushers, we've got hands raised all here in the front, on the sides. A purpose in my heart this year is gonna do some crazy stuff just give away all my books. And that's not all my books. Those are the ones that have been put in um, readable forms on computer. We'll get everything else done that way. I think this year already we're going away literally over half a million books. My only, my only concern is that would you read it? If you would read it, that would really be good. If you're not going to read it, it's just going to clog up your space on your phone. Please read. And the two books, the, the Touch of God, the one on the anointing, the first book I wrote back in 92, and then the one on how to increase anointing, and then the book Seeing Jesus, it really is. Those two books will just change the way you look at everything. Jesus would not be allowed in many churches today. He'd be kicked out. It's a fact. Because he wouldn't fit the criteria. So what's the time limit on this morning's service? Did, are you in a hurry? You're not in a hurry? All right. Because I want to share something else, and then I'm going to line... I want to pray for everybody. I want to pray for everybody, lands on everybody here today. Now, I want you to just flip back one chapter in 1 Corinthians, because I see this all together. I want to read uh, chapter 1, verse 17. And I'm going to read it out of the Amplified Classic. If you have the same Bible as me, page 1509. For Christ the Messiah sent me out not to baptize, but to evangelize by preaching the glad tidings, the gospel. And that not with verbal eloquence. 
Why is it that ministers try to get verbally eloquent as though they feel like that's going to mean that they're going to see greater results? But he said, lest the cross of Christ should be deprived of a force and emptied of its power and rendered vain, fruitless, void of value and of no effect. I had an individual who is top in the Southern Baptist Convention and is actually what you would call a heavy Calvinist who doesn't really believe in miracles today, signs and wonders today, outpouring the Spirit of God today, who actually opposed me greatly years ago. And uh, we met because of the situation going on in our nation, and he understood that I st understood what was taking place more than all of the other Christian leaders put together. So he reached out to me, and I still didn't understand. Why are you, why are you calling me? He said, because you, you've got it, you know. Well, they came to the service. They came, he came to the meetings and brought several people that were also of the persuasion. And they started to uh, basically watching what was happening. I saw tears streaming from his eyes. And so when we got back to the back room, he said to me, he said, you have it. Now remember, these are the same people that determine that we have strange fire. Are you with me? Which a lot of people don't understand what strange fire is. Strange fire is when you pretend to have the anointing and you don't have anything. That's strange fire. Strange fire is not when you have fire. Hophni and Phineas, Nadab and Abihu, go study it out and you see what strange fire is. Strange fire is when you pretend. A lot of people pretend to have the anointing, and that's strange fire, but there's no fire at all. And you don't have to pretend when you get the real. So he looked at me, he said, you know, I've studied everything about the Great Awakenings and what took place. He said, you have the fire of the Great Awakenings. I said, I see it in everybody around you. And he said, when you preach, you don't preach like others do, with because the they're, they're very eloquent. They use words that people would, you'd have to sit with a dictionary in every sentence. And I always watch children. Children are the gauge whether you are getting anywhere. If the kids are not listening, then it's time to change your message. I watch five-year-olds, six, seven-year-olds, and I can see where they're paying attention because everybody basically is a five and a six-year-old even though they don't think so. It's a fact. We're not here to talk to some theologians to impress them. I don't care what they think. Amen. So I said, you have it. He said, I said, well, so what would you say is the current problem with the current wave of preaching in America today? He said, they have a microphone and with the microphone, they stay in a controlled atmosphere. So when they speak, he said, they never raise their voice. I said, in other words, there's nothing coming from them. He said, no, there's nothing coming from them. So in other words, the prayer, oh God, as we, as we stand here today, Lord, we pray, that thou the great mercy, thy love, that thou would see thy people of God and, you know, they just pray a prayer and preach a message. They never engage the people, never look at anybody, never walk around, never talk to anybody, just preach above the heads of the people. And so as we see that God called Jonah and told Jonah to go to Nineveh, and they just speak into the air. There might be nobody there. In the end of the message, there's no demonstration. God has nothing to confirm. He's not given the opportunity to confirm anything. When we did uh, Constitution Hall, 
2014, on the opening night, we presented Dr. Billy Graham with a Lifetime Achievement Award because I know that offends some people, but as a kid, that his ministry really impacted me watching the big films of the Crusades and just as I am without one plea. And so his son-in-law flew in to come and receive the award on behalf of Dr. Graham, who was not able to. And uh, we had breakfast, so we sit in quietly at breakfast. So you, and he's gone home to be the Lord now. But he looked at me and he said, he said, can I ask you a question? I said, sure. He said, man, I just got back from India. And he said, we had a crowd of 100,000 people. And he said, I gave the altar call. Many came forward. And he said, as I was about to pray, he said, body started falling under the power. And people were just falling all over the place. What do I do with that? I said, well, did you push him? He said, no, I didn't even touch him. I said, well, it's the Lord. Don't worry about it. It's the Holy Ghost. So you see, even he asked the question, what do you do with it? Because when the Holy Ghost comes into place, your brain suddenly begins to compute. Okay, now bodies are flying through the air. What are we going to do with this? And then for a minister, begins to think, what does that look like? You know, what, what, are, what are people going to think? Are you with me? So how do we do this in a way that doesn't cause, especially if somebody's picked up and flied over, flown over two rows of chairs and, you know, some of the chairs break. I've been in 10 meetings where they break seven chairs. We'll say it was a seven chair night. It was a 30 chair night. Boom, 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 you know, chairs are snapping. And some just break just off of Pentecostal preachers just sitting. We had to have two chairs, one for each cheek, you know. But he said the microphone was a problem. So what he's trying to say is if the fire is on the inside of you, the fire needs to be released. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. So the cross of Christ is brought to nothing because of eloquence. Eloquence. Oh, you so eloquent. You eloquent thing, you. Your words have stimulated my brain. Oh, you great orator, you. You have the words of Hemingway. Whatever. For the stories and the message that cross the sheer absurdity to folly to those who are perishing and on their way to the perdition. But to us who are being saved is the manifestation of the power of God. For it is written, I will baffle. I love the Aaron Provide class. I will baffle. God's going to baffle them. I will baffle and render useless and destroy the learning of the learned and the philosophy of the philosophers and the cleverness of the clever and the discerning men of the discerning and I will frustrate and nullify them and bring them to nothing. Where's the wise man, the philosopher? Where's the scholar? Where's the investigator? Logician, the debater of this present time and age. Has not God shown up the nonsense and folly of this world's wisdom? But when the world with all its earthly wisdom failed to perceive and recognize and know God by means of its own philosophy, God in His wisdom was pleased through the foolishness of preaching, salvation procured by Christ, and to be had through Him to save those who believe, who clung to, trusted in, relied on Him, for while Jews demanding the ask for signs and miracles and Greeks pursue philosophy and wisdom, we preach Christ, the Messiah crucified, preaching which to the Jews is a scandal and an offense, a stumbling block that springs a snare and a trap, and to the Gentiles it's absurd and utterly unphilosophical nonsense. But to those who are called, whether Jews or Greek, Gentiles, Christ is 
the power of God and the wisdom of God. This is because the foolish thing that has its source in God is wider than men. And the weak thing that springs forth from God is stronger than man. I love this. For simply consider your own core brethren. Not many of you were considered to be wise according to human estimates and standards. Not many influential and powerful. Not many of high and noble birth. No, for God selected, deliberately chose what in the world is foolishness to put the wise to shame and what the world calls weak to put the strong to shame. And God has also selected, deliberately chose what in the world is low-born and insignificant and branded and treated with contempt, even the things that are nothing that He might depose and bring to nothing the things that are so that no mortal man should have pretense for glorifying and boasting in the presence of God. But it is from Him that you have your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our wisdom from God, revealed to us a knowledge of the divine plan of salvation, previously hidden, manifesting itself as our righteousness, thus making us upright and putting us in right standing with God and our consecration, making us pure and holy and our redemption, providing our ransom from eternal penalty for sin. So then as is written, let him who boasts and proudly rejoices in glories, boast and proudly rejoice and glory in the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And then he goes into chapter 2. And as for myself, brethren, when I came among you, I didn't come proclaiming to you the, the testimony, the evidence, the mystery, the secret of God concerning what he's done through Christ and salvation and lofty words of eloquence of human philosophy. For I resolved to know nothing and to become acquainted with nothing, to make a display of the knowledge of nothing and to be conscious of nothing among you except Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and Him crucified. And I was passed in a state of weakness, fear and dread and great trembling after I come among you. And my language and my message were not set forth in persuasive, enticing, plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power, a proof by the Spirit and the power of God operating on me, stirring in the minds of my hearers the most holy emotions and thus persuading them so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, human philosophy, but in the power of God. That was the hope for the early church and that's the hope for this latter church. Can you say amen? amen. Let God's word be true. Let every man be a liar. We will never back down. We will never compromise to become accepted in the circles of men, if it means we are never invited to certain places, if it means that there's certain pulpits that will be off limits to us, then so be it. We will stand in the street. We will stand in the market square. We will preach. We will lift up our voice and we will proclaim for Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. He never changes. So we will lift up our voice like a mighty trumpet and we will sound the alarm. We will bring the glad tidings of great joy. We will announce to the world that He saves. We will announce to the world that He heals, that He delivers, that He sets a captive free. We'll announce to the world that He still does what He did in Bible days that the days of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the book of Acts are still in the earth today, that He is moving by His Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not only shall we announce to those that are without, but we shall then display to those that are without the very manifestation of the power of the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. For He lives in you, and He lives big on the inside of you. And he rise big on the inside of you and he'll use you. 
Hallelujah. That's why you might say it's just me. Many times I look back, and even now, I still am totally dependent upon the Holy Spirit. That I realize that if it's one day that his hand is not on me, I'm in trouble. That I'm totally dependent upon him. Doesn't matter what successes that we've had in the ministry. That we're totally dependent upon him. And never want to become in a place where we depended upon ourselves. Jesus. Mm. That's it. That's it. Totally dependent. Totally dependent. Totally dependent. Totally dependent upon him. Every single day when you wake up in the morning time. Not dependent upon what you have. Not dependent upon your degrees, your certificates. Not dependent upon your achievements. Not dependent upon the money that you have in a bank account. Because all that could be gone overnight. Totally dependent upon him. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. He is the vine. We are the branches. We draw our life from him. If you live in me, and my words live in you, you're going to ask whatever you want. One translation said, if I don't have it, I'll make it for you. You abide in me, and my words abide in you. Oh, yes. Here it is, my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, and by bearing fruit you prove that you are my disciples. In actual fact, if there's no fruit coming from us, it's impossible to claim that we are a disciple of Jesus Christ because if you follow him and he lives big on the inside of you, fruit shall be made manifest everywhere you go and you shall ex expect it and inspect it every single day of your life. Can you say amen? Before I lay hands on everybody here, I just want to say this because I know there's many ministries here, people believe in God for provision. And that's an area you say, Pastor, I, I still struggle with provision. But just so you know, the moment you plug into heaven and the anointing, you'll never lack again. You will never, ever lack again, ever. I prophesy over you coming out of this week that you shall never ever lack resources ever again for your life, for your ministry, your church, your business, your family. You shall never, you will never ever lack. Now there are individuals here. You don't lack, but you always worry about lack. May God remove the worry about lack off of you. For the Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want. You shall not lack. I was born seven weeks premature. I weighed four pounds, three ounces. My life hung in the balance. I wasn't praying. My parents didn't really even pray much back in those days, but yet the Lord brought me here. So he knows me. Can you say amen? amen? And if he could touch me in Africa, carry me to 88 countries of the world, and I'm not done yet. You watch the next five years, not done. So you'll never lack. I said, you'll never lack. 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 Don't worry about it, whether it looks like it's in your bank account or not because it's in his account. Can you say amen? 
Now just be seated for a moment. Maybe I'll get to some of this tonight. I talked about the open vision when the fire came into me. One of the things that was outstanding to me was that at that moment, suddenly, I was in the treasury of heaven. And what astounded me was that the treasury, everything was perfect. From that day, I began to demand perfection uh, of whatever we did. It could not be done sloppily. It had to be done the best. Not to waste our resources, but it had to be done for the king. So the last three and a half years, not that we didn't do that before, but you know, sometimes we let certain things slide. Now we can't. I have an adverse reaction to anything done shoddily or just done quickly. It has to be done professionally and it has to be done the best because we're doing it for the king. We're not here to impress anybody coming. We're here to, to roll it out for the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Can you say amen? When the Lord taught me about these things and I had the breakthrough, everything changed. And there were times that we were tight in the ministry, but it had nothing, I realized it had nothing to do with me. It was my staff spending money quicker than water and buying stuff that we didn't need, you know. And I won't go into that. That's why I've learned how to handle everything. And as of now, I mean, the way we run to the moment, I know exactly what we have what we need. I know what we need between now and October. Everything down projected ahead. Everything's laid out. I can tell you exactly where everything is. And there were days in the ministry I didn't ever knew. We were like two weeks behind in reporting. So they tell me, Pastor, you have 200,000. I just give it away. And then two weeks later, Pastor, we need 450,000. I said, but you, what happened? We, I had 200 grand and then I got another 200. And so I've got the money but now I don't have it because I gave the 200,000 away. So I was just always just emptying whatever I had. So the, the, you know, because we were operating off of a stupid reporting system it was always two weeks behind. And so only when I went back and started looking at things, I realized I actually had all the provision I needed. That there, there was not one time that I could tell you in my ministry that the Lord forsook me or we didn't have the provision. Provision was always there. It just... You have people come around you and then they, you know, go spend. <laughs> One guy who was running my tape ministry at the time, he ordered. <laughs> we couldn't understand why my accounts payable was so high. We, we went back into the shipping department. He had ordered like 30,000 tape holders for two, four, six, you know, whatever. We're looking in a warehouse full of stuff. We said, what did you do that for? He said, well, it was on sale. So that's what started me giving my product away because all my cash was eaten. They took away my money that I couldn't give. So I thought, fine, I'll just give away product. So I just started giving away. I would throw out whole book tables. You know, I've always given away my stuff. So they said, we should actually sell something to cover the cost. I said, I never do cover the cost anyway because I give everything away. Stop giving the stuff away. I said, shut up. So when I look back, all I can tell you, there's not one time in the ministry that the Lord didn't undertake for us. He always, always did, always. And God even undertook when they were stealing from the offerings of the churches that I went to. Pastors with long fingers would pilfer. Oh yeah, they did. Big checks. People from inside the counting rooms would come to me and said, they stole from the offerings. And I said, I know. It's okay. They said, oh, that's a tithe. They pulled that out. It wasn't. It was a Tuesday night. There was no tithe, nothing. No, that's a tithe. We know those people. It wasn't. They weren't given to them. Do you know what? Every one of those churches don't exist today, and those pastors are dead. I'm serious. But I just said, Lord, they needed more than me. So they felt they want to help them. They had what you call help yourself ministries international. 
So I said, Lord, if they want to help themselves to what was supposed to come to me, it's fine. They need it more than me. So I just, I release it. I'm going to keep my heart pure. I'll just add that to my giving. There were times when we'd get on a plane and my wife and I, we'd look at what they gave us and it, a literal pain would come. A literal, like a physical pain, you could feel it. And I would immediately say, I will not be offended. I refuse to be offended. Father, this, this is not my source and this is not my supply. You are my source and you are my supply. And I gladly relinquish everything that they've taken from me today. And I give it to you and I sow it into the ministry in the city. And I bless them in Jesus' name. Thank you that you are my source. It took me about five minutes with my hands raised, just worshiping God on the plane. I didn't know what the stewardess thought of me or whatever. But I just lifted my hands. Father, I just thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your provision. Thank you, Lord. You're my provider. Thank you. And then just, just let it go. There were times where I thought, I'm going to go and behind me one of those big bulldozers used in the mining industry. And I'm going to pull up on the parking lot in the middle of the night and I'm going to run it through the lobby of the church and run it all the way down to the platform. I'll scoop everything and dump it on the platform and just leave a sign and say, Rodney was here. <laughs> and then I thought that would be wrong. <laughs> it, would, it would be wrong. That would be so wrong. How would I be able to call myself a servant of God if I went and bulldozed churches down? Even though later on they were bulldozed. Those buildings were actually bulldozed. There's certain churches I preached in had mighty revivals. You can't even find them today. They're bulldozed. No. Because they wanted to be there for the extended revival because the money was good. And I always took the tithe and offering for them Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. We go to some churches, suddenly they have three extra services they never had before. Well, we really have, we have a Monday meeting and a Tuesday woman's auxiliary. So the people do bring their tithe to that. And Thursday night, it was like normally our bingo night and it was a great income to the ministry. And we, we, okay, well, why don't I just give you everything seeing that's what you want? How many ministers are yet? Wave your hand at me. All right, so you understand what I'm talking about. Now somebody said, Pastor, we actually talking about the anointing. What's this got to do with money? More than you know. Because Jesus said, if you can't be faithful with unrighteous mammon, money, possessions, who will entrust you the true riches? The anointing. So the test to the anointing is your finances, your money, what you do with it. If I look at your money, if I look on a computer and do a forensic check on what you spend your money on, I can tell you how much you love God. So he said, no, no, that's not possible. Oh, yes. You know who actually said that? Dr. Billy Graham said that. Dr. Billy Graham said that he could tell how many people loved God by looking at their checkbooks. I just found this out this last week, that there's a church with mega millionaires in it. And then they don't tithe off their businesses. They tithe personally, but they don't tithe off their businesses. And when I suggested that they tithe off the business, they were horrified. How do you tithe off your company when a company is doing 100 million a year? I said, easy. Uh, you tithe. <laughs> yeah, but we draw a salary and tithe off of that. I said, tithe off your salary, tithe off your business. What's wrong with you? Couldn't grab it. Couldn't grab it. They told me this mega church has got millionaires, like 1,500 millionaires, and all they do is take in 175 million a year. I thought, that is like 
That, that told me right there they're not tithing. I thought, are you kidding me? you got 1,500 millionaires and your whole income for your ministry is 175 million. Are you kidding me? I ain't tithing. That's why everybody should be part of a local church, should be tithing, and then give offerings over and above that. I'm going to pray for everybody. Just stay with me. This is important. My son called me. He's just trying to call me now. If you can just text him, Ray just said, I'm preaching. I'll call him when I'm done. But my son called me one day. He said, the directors of Push Pay, one of the top directors of Push Pay arrived in Tampa, came to our church. I said, what do they want to do with me? Tell them to up their game. I'm tired of them being down on certain days and can't connect to push pay. If I'm going to use them, they either get with the program I'm using somebody else. They said, no, no, no. No, you don't understand. They've come to see you because you're one of their top clients. I said, what are you talking about? They said, out of 11,000 churches and ministries, they service that RMI is one of the top 125 when it comes to volume and said that we were in the top five on the East Coast of the United States. And they said our monthly partners give an average of 100% above and beyond the monthly gift versus the other church ministries partners that give 28% above and beyond. Yeah. They wouldn't tell me where I was in the fight. And most, the many of our people don't give by push pay. So that shows you. People people around the river or come around this ministry or around what JD's doing, you're going to learn about provision and you're going to learn how to walk and believe God and trust God. Amen. I mean, if there's anybody that's here and hates prosperity, you need to go and see a psychiatrist. When the dude's pure box is prosperity, Pennsylvania. Pure box seven. Prosperity. They drive 45 minutes out of the way just to have the PO box in a place called Prosperity, Pennsylvania. <laughs> and if I lived here, I'd go get a place to stay in Prosperity. I'd put my house in Prosperity. Somebody said, where do you live? I live in Prosperity. How far away is that? An hour. An hour away. I'm going to go do a one night 300 city tour and I'm going to go to prosperity. I have to. I have to preach one night in prosperity. I just have to do it. No one lives there. Nobody lives there. I'll make people live there. <laughs> There's no venue or anything? There's no. nothing. There's a PO box. There's a PO box. I'm going to put up a tent and I'm going to preach a message in prosperity. Pennsylvania. I have to do it. Before Jesus comes. Maybe you come preach with me there. Be easy. People just walk outside and put it in the P.O. box. <laughs> For your one to give, just go right outside. The P.O. box is right there. Just put it right in there. P.O. box seven. Number seven. P.O. box seven. Prosperity, Pennsylvania. What does Jesus say? Freely you have received. Freely give. So... Before we lay hands on everybody here, I'm going to give you an opportunity to sow into Revival Today Church and into this ministry. Now, he told me every other guest is taking offering for themselves. When we arrived last night, they asked me where my offering envelopes are. I said, I didn't bring any. He said, I want you to take an offering for your ministry. I said, no, I'm taking an offering for your ministry. I'm not coming here to take an offering for my ministry. This is your camp meeting, and we want to cast a vision for what God's about to do here in the next six months. And I'm believing God for a great offering this morning. Amen. 
I'm not trying to take away from the guests that are coming tomorrow and the next day and the next day, but they're coming, they're gonna take the offering for themselves. This offering is going to revival today's church. So I really want you to overboard give. Not that you don't give to them when they come, but if you're gonna put your biggest offerings in, you put it into Revival Days Church and you have that opportunity this morning and tonight. That's why you can go free up some in this afternoon and somebody said, well, I was gonna give a big offering. Then if you're gonna give a big offering, you do it today, you do it this morning and tonight. Somebody said, what about the guests that are coming? That's their problem, it's not my problem. <laughs> if their offerings are low, it's got nothing to do with Revival today. It's got to do with it. Uh, another preacher was here and took all the offerings that they was going to get to come to them. And it was going to Revival Today Church. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Because let me, I saw yesterday, and maybe you'll hear this week, what's coming. What's coming is going to flood you. What's coming is going to blow your mind. If you've been blown away by what God's done the last 18 months at Revival Today Church, I'm, only very few people know about what's coming. And I'm one of the very few people that know what's coming. You're not ready for what's coming. It's going to blow your mind. You're going to go, oh my God, how did this happen? If you thought the testimonies, listen, if you thought the testimonies of the property and land and all that has been great, you ain't ready for this next one. This next one is a mega, this next thing is acceleration. This next thing is beyond anything. I'm telling you, sure dropping what is about to happen. And we want them to be in a position to as they move into this next phase, of course, no money will be gone. They won't ever go get money from the bank, so everything's going to be paid cash. But when you get, I pray that they'll be able to unfold it by the end of the week. But it's phenomenal. And I actually got to walk, I got to see everything. Somebody said, can you tell us what it is? Yes, for a certain fee into the building fund of what they're doing here, <laughs> I might tell you privately. I really want you to pray and ask God, Lord, what do you want me to do? And go over and above you that are watching online. I want you to sow your finest seed today on a Monday morning. Let us break the record of an offering ever received on a Monday morning. This morning, into Revival Today Church and to the ministry of Jonathan and Dulles Shuttlesworth and what God's going to do here in the city of Pittsburgh. I have the faith for this. He said, take an offering of yourself. I said, I have no faith to take an offering of myself. I said, it'd be the worst offering on the planet. I just, I can't. But I have faith for this house because we carry it in our spirit. My wife and I pray over them all the time, pray over this church. And I came to be a help. Can you say amen? amen. I came to be a blessing. So by you sowing your best gift now. That's true. Yeah. I just want to say while you're standing here with him saying that they pray for us. I know this is a new church and people, and then people in the community say, is it a cult and all that? Because anything that grows is a cult. Um, and standard churches are supposed to die. But growth's normal for the church. And then this is our covering. Pastor Rodney Howard Brown and Pastor Donica Howard Brown that you saw here uh, last night with them and will be here again tonight. They run RMIMA, Revival Ministries, Ministries International. International Ministerial Association. That's who I'm ordained with and have been ordained with them a long time. And if you would go there for their camp meetings, their, their ministers meeting in May and October. You heard them, I don't know if it, people catch numbers or not. They're having a youth camp with 5,300 children and teenagers registered. And then when you go there, there's 2,000, 3,000 ministries from all over the world that, that call that their home, that pack the place out in the pavilion. So I know people think Assemblies of God, Church of God, and, and everything's great. You don't have to knock something to, to compliment something else. But if you go there, you can tell. I would think I wasn't alive then, but I would say like if you went to Rama in 1978, 1980, where it's just catching its explosion, that's who we're hooked up with. And then the ministries you're going to see here are the top from all over the world that we have relationship with. So I just want, this is not just a guest speaker. This is my father in the Lord and all the insane stuff you put, see me put on social media. You think maybe I got a few screws loose and maybe I do. 
but I'm not not under anybody. This isn't just some guy that grew up here and decided to start a church, as you can see, because you can't, this is God. Th this amount of people on a Monday, you know, we're not in the Great Depression where no one has a job. Th this is the Lord. We, we, are, we are hooked up together, and I'm, I'm hooked up with him. They're going forward. They're getting ready to build that enormous glass atrium and everything else they're doing. And then as we've tied in with that ministry, the grace flows downhill. And so when your father and the Lord's going up and you're not a member of some group that's talking about how their churches are dying and they're going to have to consolidate churches and they're going to have to go to pastoral commi or, or pulpit committee because there's no more pastors coming out of their Bible colleges. We are not a part of a dying thing. We are a part of a rocket ship and the greatest days are now and it's going to get even better in the future. Amen. So before we go to the ministry of laying on our hands, which that's what it is. It's a ministry of laying on our hands, something the Lord gave to me. That I will not lay hands on you without expecting something to take place. But I want you to release your faith in this offering here today. Not just for your own life, your home, your marriage, your business, your ministry, whether you pastor, evangelist, or missionary. That you're going to go to the next level. But even what will come by the laying on of hands will be an impartation that will be supernatural. And let this signify what you believe in God for. And I'm really praying that this be a record-breaking offering that in the history of Monday mornings, that no offering has been received on this level. There's people here today that can give 10,000, some 50,000, some 100,000. There might even be people who can drop a million. That's happened already. Not only the million he gave, but the lady that flew in from out of state to give a million. So people like, like Pastor said, they're not poor. So I want you to pray. Let this be significant. I'm not trying to rob the other speakers coming of an offering. But between you and me, I'm trying to rob the other speakers coming of an offering. <laughs> I really want revival today church to get thoroughly blessed and i've only got this morning and tonight i really 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 believe in god for something big 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 so help me and put your faith together with me and you that are watching to see this ministry go over the top can you say amen, amen. my apologies to all the other speakers i'm so sorry <laughs> but i'm not sorry I pray they come and do the same thing. Amen. So let's pray. And I have the faith for this. I have a total faith for this. I feel it in the room. I feel it so strong. I feel the gift of faith for this. There's people God will speak to. to. Just write out a check of 100,000 and more. There's people watching online. Maybe you're the next one to give the million. When you see what's coming, you realize, you realize what God is doing. Million dollar offering, billion dollar flow. You realize it's, listen, it's remarkable. I can't tell you right now, I can't. If I told you, I'd have to kill you. But I can't tell you, I cannot tell you right now what's coming. But it's huge, it's big, and it's God. So let's pray. Father, now take, take these gifts and these seeds that are being sown even now. As your people worship you, thank you for the ministry of Jonathan and Adolis and the team here, Revival Today Church, and what you're doing here. Thank you for this ministry, the acceleration that we've even seen in the past eight years, as each year seems to eclipse the next or the, the past, and this year that will eclipse last year already. And I pray now that as your people sow, multiply them and multiply the seed that's sown here. Cause them never ever to lack because together we're all hooked into your eternal purpose and plan of seeing America shaken with another great spiritual awakening and to see the nation of the earth quake under your hand. Bless your people as they worship you with their giving today.
and honor you. And then, Lord, as we move towards the laying on our hands, grant the people, not that they can buy by dollar amount the anointing, but meet them in proportion to their faith concerning their giving today, we pray. In Jesus' name, I never once said, Amen. I want the ushers to come and hand out the offering envelopes, if you would, please. You can send your gift today. You can mail in to, I believe it's P.O. Box 7, Prosperity, Pennsylvania, 15329. You can give online, revivaltoday.com. And that's an offer for a T-shirt if you want Real John Talk. You can get that. Amen. And then put the other ways. Dollar sign RT Give on Cash App. Venmo at RT Give. Revivaltoday.com forward slash PayPal. You know, my ministry doesn't even have stuff like that. I have to try to remember this. You guys are way advanced, more advanced than me. Hashtag donate on Facebook. Example, donate a hundred, a thousand, a hundred thousand. Text RT to 50155. 50155. You can also give cryptos. Bitcoin and some other stuff, I don't even know what it is. But scan there if you're watching online. Maybe you have to go to your bank and free something up and send it in. This is good soil. This is good ground. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's coming, yes. what's coming the next six months is over the top. And by your sowing, you are part of that. And you're being caught up. You're in the slipstream. You're being caught up into that. And you'll see the acceleration in your own life, marriage, ministry, home, business, church. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And then also, this is very important. I, I connected them up with this churchworld.com. You can go there. And uh, the church has signed up. And basically, you can leave a bequest. That means when you die from your estate, you can leave to the church. Select Revival Today from the drop-down menu when creating your will. The drop-down menu will appear after selecting my church. And you do that. Let me tell you what will happen. Because... If you, there's a lot of people who don't have a will. Who doesn't have a will? You can get a free will just by doing that under Revival Today Church. So that when you die, the, the government doesn't take everything. And it's not that the church knows that you bequeathed a million dollars to the ministry. So they're actually praying for your early demise. Are you with me? All that stuff is, is secret. They, know, they will never know. They will just know that an amount has been... Um, uh, a bequest has been given to the church, but they'll never know. Mary Sue Smith gave five million dollars. Didn't you pray for the killer today? I need the money desperately. <laughs> so they'll never know. It's all just private, and it's all legal in all 50 states. And it's another way that you can give beyond the grave. Are you with me? So you can not only give now, but you can give when you die. So when you cross over from heaven, the money's being transferred into. Uh, P.O. Box 7, Prosperity, Pennsylvania. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many excited that the church made that available to you? And uh, Dr. Frank Harbour, who's a friend of mine, I connect him with them and he signed the church in too. And there's other churches, if you want to sign into that, you can let your people do that to your own ministry, which is not a bad idea, just as long as you keep quiet about it and don't go praying for their early demise. Amen. I heard the story of a billionaire in a church. And it was like these adventures. You see them taking submarines and going to the depths or climbing Everest or going to the Arctic or whatever. And this billionaire took a, a friend with him. And uh, they were sailing, circumnavigating the planet. And they had a shipwreck. I can't remember if it was an underground, con uh, underwater container that was just floating below, took the whole thing out. And they scrambled. Fortunately, it was a desert island. They were 
They were there and it had some coconuts and they were able to eat the coconuts and, and uh, live off some fish and stuff like that. They knew how to survive and they were just sitting there and weeks went by, months went by and they were just stranded. And uh, his friend looked at the billionaire and said, listen, do you think anybody's going to ever find us? We, this is it. We stranded for life. He said, don't worry. He said, my pastor, my church, I'm such a big tither, he'll find me. <laughs> anyway, so. You know, there's some people, if they were lost and stranded, there's an island, nobody even go look for them. You know what I mean? But there's some people they go look for. So where, where's, brother, where's brother Jack? I haven't seen him in a while. Oh, he's on an island in the Pacific. He's got a, a, a basketball. He's, it's called Wilson. And he's talking to it. He's got a long beard. and walks around rambling to himself. Anybody ready to give? Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Who needs just another moment? What about you online watching, watching by way of wherever the stream is going, Facebook, YouTube, or the Revival Today app, which is important that you download that app. You can find everything on that app. Don't delay, so I'll do it this afternoon. You do it now. I command you in Jesus' name to give now online. But be obedient now. Somebody said, well, you're not going to lay hands on me. No, but the Lord will come right into your house and touch you right where you are. Now put the coffee cup down, you. Standing there looking at your TV with a coffee cup in it. God will knock you and your coffee flying. Amen. I want the ushers to go ahead and receive the biggest offering on a Monday morning ever in the history of Monday morning's offerings. Amen. Don't let me down. I have a photographic memory. I know your IP address. I don't know exactly where you live. I'll come to your house. If there is some music, let it flow at this junction.
This is holy ground. We're standing. We're standing on holy ground. For the Lord is king. Where is his? He's holy. This is holy ground. We're standing. the touch of God. I would not trade the presence of the Lord or the touch of heaven for anything the world has to offer. The anointing is so strong here right now. Ask the Lord, maybe you're standing here today, you say, Pastor, I don't really feel anything. Ask God to give you sensitivity to the anointing that you become sensitive to His presence. And you learn to recognize it. The strongest touch I've ever received from the Lord is privately. In extra fact, you wouldn't want to see me getting touched publicly because I'd be of no benefit to anybody. So why, that's why we create scenarios just like this where people can come. But I can't get hungry for you. Neither can I get thirsty for you. I can't make the deals with the Lord. I don't know what your contract with God is. I don't know what you've talked to the Lord about. I don't know what kind of business you've been doing with Him. Because see, I do business with God. I go in, we talk. I cry from the bottom of my heart. I go into negotiations. I'm always talking to him. I can't do that for you. I can pray over you. But you're the one that has to do business with God. If God would touch you today by his anointing, what would that mean? What would, what would you do then with that? Because to everyone that receives a touch, you're going to be held accountable for what you've received. It's like the parable of the talents to the one he gave one. And I'll just stop right there. The guy with one buried it. If you receive one touch from heaven and you don't do anything with it, I'm not talking about fake. I'm talking about real. If you receive the touch of heaven. Because I will just tell you right now, persecution will come. You can mark that down. Any person that's ever moved in the anointing has suffered great persecution. Even to the point where some of them, their ministries were only really accepted after they died. And everyone talks about them today. But if they were alive today, they would never go to one of their ministry meetings. People talk about Wigglesworth like he's some fond person, but they would never be seen dead in a Wigglesworth service because he was, he was the next level. I'm just telling you, the same with the great R. Roberts, and I knew R. Roberts personally. 
He was a friend of mine. I knew him for many years. People like Dr. Kennedy Hagen, which I knew personally. People like Norval Hayes, which I knew personally. People like Reinhard Bonker, which I knew personally. People like R.W. Shambuck, which I knew personally, been in my home. In actual fact, one of the things that you might not know, but many of these men in the latter part of their life were all alone. No one called. No one called. As long as the thousands were coming, and the people were fighting over seats to get into the place. But in the end, they were alone. I know, I would call them. I could hear their voice. Hello? And then suddenly they hear my voice. And they, you could hear strength came into their voices. Rodney. Ultimately, they were just ordinary people with a major mega God. And that's all we really are. We're just ordinary people with a very extraordinary God. It's so holy right now here. Can you sing that one more time? This is holy ground. We're standing. We're standing on holy For the Lord is here. For the Lord is here. And where is his holy? We're standing. We're standing on And we are standing. I know that there are angels. And I know that there are angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now. We are. Now, here's what's going to happen. I want to line you up. If we can spread out evenly so you don't fall on top of somebody else. I'm just going to come by and put my hand on you just like I have over the years. I'm just going to say in the name of Jesus, I might just touch you and say now. I might say filled, full, fire, whatever. It doesn't matter. I want you to mix your faith. I want you to say this out loud. I believe the moment hands are laid upon me that I receive from heaven that which I need today and I receive it by faith in Jesus' name. Father, you can touch me today with a special anointing that I will carry with me the remainder of my life. I promise to be faithful with it 
I promise to give it out as I freely receive today. I freely give. And I thank you for that now. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, Father, as we line these dear ones up and lay hands upon them, we do this by the direction of the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the laying on of hands, of transmission, of transference, of the anointing, just like when the woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of your garment, Lord Jesus, and the fire of that virtue flowed out from the hem into her body, and immediately she was healed of that plague. As hands are laid upon them, as we release our faith with the point of contact, we thank you for that anointing that will flow into them, and that anointing equal to the assignment upon their life upon their ministry, upon their business. From the youngest among us to the senior among us, we pray. And we give you the glory and the praise and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Kofi, Pastor Kofi, Evangelist Kofi, anointed Kofi. The first five rows in the middle, you come forward ushers are going to line you up and then on the back you go to the back and everybody else from the side you go to the side and the ushers are going to line you up so the first five rows just come forward first five rows on all sections come forward and the ushers are going to line you up Right through you, 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 out of your inner being. A river will flow. A river will flow. A river will flow. A river that should flow through these hands, from this mouth, through this instrument. Mandamba ratasa patia sa. So bravon de liste pepeta totora de nanda. Brabanda rebria fas so bravon de. Si papabando so poradia sto papaya to nondo. Perida bambanda babande de bis so bravon de. From these hands. Special touch. So prapaka talini de atoso tata. Special touch, Lord. Special anointing, even greater. Si prabondo so prapayata. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We do bless your name. We do bless your name. We do bless. We do bless your name. Yeah, that's it. On your mouth. Now in Jesus' name. Rasa, Prabatasa, Probonde, Mida Redesta, Prabaka, Patanda, Robonde, Mina Radonondo, the Sopravata. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. And we are standing. On holy ground. And I know that there are angels. All around. Let us pray. Lift those hands to heaven. Thank the Lord Jesus for the anointing. 
Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, from the top of your head to the very soles of your feet right now, I lose thy touch. I lose thy touch. I lose thy touch. I lose thy touch. I lose thy touch right now. I lose it. Rapa, Rabondre, Diasta, Papata, Sapromondo, Meredendo, Radista, Papaya, Rapondo, Mandrasto, Riesta, Pa, Robondi, Risa, Papata, Menonde, Merenembo, Raba, Ramondo, Libripo, Parana, Parreno, Minini, Sopravo, Anana, Merenosa, Maranato, Tidaba, Rosaba, Radoropa, Radiso, in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus, now, in the name, 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 right now, 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 in the name, now, 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 in the name of the Lord, right now, right now, right now, right now. Now, 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 Rosapai, Rupotai, Rapato, Rapati, Rapato, Parade, Menoneto, Dadia, Menoneto. Now, 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 now. Guys, do double lines, man. Now, 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 single lines. Now, 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 take now.
just hold up your feet. Now. Yeah. Now. 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 Fire. 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 Fire of God. Fire of God. Fire of God. Fire of God right now. Fire. Now. 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 The fire of God. Fire. The fire of God. The fire of God. The fire of God. Now. Fire. Now. Fire. Jesus. Jesus. Fire! 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 Now! Fire! Fire! Fire of God! Fire of God! Now! 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 Fire! Now! Now! Jesus! Fire! Now! Fire. Oh, bam, bam, bam. Fire. 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 Now. Fire. Now. 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 never seen a room with people so afraid to fall down. People are more afraid to fall down than receive from the anointing. So I don't know, I don't know what churches you go to. Maybe you've never seen the power of God. I know we've got a lot of visitors here. Like I said to you, it's not about falling down. But when your attitude is about falling, you're not going to receive a thing. Might as well just go sit down. Seriously, I've never seen so many people afraid. Just the falling down. That's a basic. The anointing is just simple. Even the preachers, I've never seen preachers so afraid. They lose their reputation. You're going to lose a lot when you get around the anointing. Like I said, if you'd raise your hand to receive, when the hands are laid upon you, instead of just standing there blinking, I can't do anything for you. The Lord is the one that touches you. Some of you might even get some joy, which I know will be rough, getting joy in Pittsburgh. I mean, who could believe that you could even get some joy in Pittsburgh? Just play the music, just play the music. lines always work the best.
Try to catch them if you can. That's why we actually have catches, so we don't have droppers. That would help. Somebody said, well, if it was the Lord, you wouldn't need catches. We don't normally in places like Africa, but in America, people sue for every nonsense thing why we have catches. But some idiots come just to get injured in church so they can sue the church. <laughs> Jesus! The brace position, if you don't want to fall one foot in front of the other, and a stiff spine. And then just pray loudly in tongues to make everybody think if they to receive. See, if you don't know how to receive the anointing, how do you pray for people? and release the anointing that you've received. The anointing is like electricity. The characteristics of the flow. Good conductor, bad conductor, and then you just have the regular bus conductor. Receive, 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 receive. Now, Jesus, receive now. Receive, receive, receive. Jesus, receive now. Receive. Father, a lot of these people need joy. A lot of people need joy, Lord. Grant unto them joy, the oil of joy. At least grant them joy. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Fire. Fire. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes. Mm. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it right now. That's it right now. That's it right now, that's it right now. That's it right now, now. That's it. Fire, fire, now, now, now. Fire, fire of God, fire of God, now, now. Filled, 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 filled. Now, now, now. Fire, now, fire, now, fire, now, now, fills, fills, now, now, brol sapra, rokota sa, ra, sofrobonde, edando, edande bota pai, edando patai, don soprapai, brol saparadea sa, and an amount so sapai to you, nandroso. That's it, that's it right now. That's it right now. That's it right now. Yeah. That's it right now. Take that right now. <laughs> Woo! 
take it from the top of your head to the very soles of your feet. Yeah, yeah. Quickening now. A quickening now by the hand of God. Quickening now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Take it. Take it right now. Take that right now. Mm. Take that right now. Take that right now. Take that right now. Take that right now. Fire. 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 Yes. Fire. Oh. Fire. Take it right now. Parabasso propoco to fire. Maranamambabra, dabari di be peto so propota resa. Mibre endu stupra pa kitirisa, parunino more de stekea. Now, Lord, those that are still watching online and a whole sound booth over there, touch them. The fire fall in their homes, in the sound booth, on the cameras. No, in Jesus' name, touch them. Grant unto them that which they ask for. We pray this now in Jesus' mighty name. That's right, he's heard your cry. 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 Double dose. Double dose! A double dose the Holy Ghost bubbles out your belly from there. Yeah. So profound. Aha. Roto Aha. Aha. Woo. Woo. So profound. Momo ribici piteya popolia. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mananama, mananama, mama maninu, mama ninu. Parabusha profota pachi poto. Eh, eh, yeah. Like a wind, like a wind, like a mighty wind, like a mighty wind. Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So profound, for remarkable, terrible, for the pain, the tap, the tap, the tear, the tear. From under the best, the perpetual, the profound, the sita, the botapa. So profound, the sita, the perpetual, the remember, the kai. Mandiri, my remind, the sita. Saprabata, <laughs> saprabata. It's like a river. You just jump in and swim in it. You swim in the river. You swim in the river. You just jump in. Some people go ankle deep. They just tip their toes in. But just go in over your head. Just go in and swim. Just swim. You swim in the river. You swim in the river. <laughs> you can splash. Try to splash some other people. They're just sitting on the bank, they're all dry. Just splash them. That's all I do. I try to get everybody in the river. Sometimes I have to throw people in. Sometimes I just pick them up and throw them in the river. You know, 
Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be his name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, wonderful, 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 wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Lord. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Lord. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name. Poranama paranata sapapon veri teleta leta leta no morane nende treto randata rite teto ibarsi popor magi teleto rando teridiste papa papa rosso patai tetendo tadande 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 tarando prite paretta tarando ridiste bravonda Lando redite, leto redita, lata, randa la la lita, creto le bati le biti le bofande, rando le tolo so paiete, sapa to redito so prapa, mando, reto le so te assai, parato, manata rediso prapaiete le so te ata, sabrati sapato to remati se te, randa na to Taridi Ranene Brumbambande Mododoto Patedo Tarata Le Petita Ba Pa 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 Sorodosia Moradisa Pataya Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, blessed Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This whole this whole area really needs some joy. Really does. Really needs some joy. Like really excessive joy. I mean over the top joy. I mean Pennsylvania, West Virginia. I mean, take one look at your governor and then realize <laughs> that you need some joy. West Virginia needs joy. I've never seen so many long-faced people. I'm not saying it's got anything to do with the families. You know, they never really got outside their family, you know what I'm saying? Amen. <laughs> that can be a problem. Can't. Can be a problem. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying it could be a problem. You know you're in trouble when you only had to pick from your second or third cousin. And that was it. The family would not allow anything other. Second or third cousin. <laughs> I've got people glaring at me as though it is so. <laughs> It really is so. 
Well, I have the same last name I had when I was single. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We expect to hear many testimonies about what the Lord's doing. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, don't take it as an insult. All the royal families have done that. From the King of England to Belgium, Holland, they all, everyone's, that's how they keep their wealth. All the Rothschilds did that. They all did it. Everybody's inbred. So don't take it personally. Amen. People get insulted, but I mean, Royals, whole royal families. I know I probably should let you go to have some lunch. I haven't even eaten breakfast. So not that I need any breakfast. I don't actually even need lunch. Amen. I'm still living off of COVID supplies. <laughs> what a big lie. We should never have had COVID supplies. Because the problem is we ate it. You know, we didn't need it, but we bought the supplies, so we ate it. <laughs> now, the big thing is, what are you going to do with the touch of God? You have to apply it to your assignment. The same anointing that I flow in in ministry, you have to flow in in business. Some say, I don't know how to do that. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you. If you call in the government, governmental realms, the same anointing that I use in ministry, you have to flow in, in the government realm. Somebody said, how do I do that? And you have to ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. There's an ac application of the anointing in all these realms. And that's something that you and the Holy Ghost have to learn. It's not just about having hands laid on you. You can have hands laid on you till you go bald. And many have. And it doesn't mean to say anything. You're going to have to ask the Holy Spirit to show you the application of the anointing that's upon your life in that realm. And I promise you, every time God anoints somebody, it's innovative. It always pushes the envelope because God is not stuck in a rut. God's got many things that he wants to do in the earth today that's going to actually shock and astound people. Or well, you think about the new technologies. I mean, I started ministering in the day before the internet. There was no Facebook. There was no, no, no cell phones. Nobody was texting each other, inviting people. There was no Snapchat. There was nothing. I mean, I, w I started before... Um, What's that one site that was up before Facebook? MySpace. MySpace. Before MySpace, I was. I, I started ministering when there was no internet. You didn't know what the World Wide Web was. The only web you dealt with was a spider in the corner of the house. That was the web. I still remember you got mail. I still remember you taking your phone and having to put it on some modem, and then it's 64, whatever that was. 
and, and, and just so slow. You could shave between screens. So the only way we advertised was word of mouth. We just told other people about the meeting. Thousands came. So you don't need all this other stuff. Most people that follow you on the internet, they're not there because they want to be, they're just there to watch what you're doing. They're not following you because they like you. They just keep an eye on you. Are you with me? Some said, I got all these followers. Uh, you'll only find out when you persecuted how many followers you have. Jesus had many followers. But when he went to Gethsemane, they all went to sleep. Even the closest to him went to sleep. When he went to Calvary, they weren't anywhere to be seen. Amen. All the apostles, each one of them went, went to the grave by themselves. You know, if you're going into, if you've been thrown to the lions, you're not going to have many volunteers, you know, to say, huh? Look, I followed your ministry, this, but I promise you, this is where you and me part ways. You could have been a little easier. You didn't have to push the envelope. Now we're going, going to be thrown to the lions. I'm opting out. I had been warned about your ministry, but unfortunately, I didn't listen. We didn't have to overdo it like we did. We just followed denominational guidelines, would have been fine. You would have been eligible. They were looking at you for district superintendent. You could have been district superintendent. Why, even when you retired, you could have gone to Springfield. And you could have worked in the upper echelon. But you blew it. And so now, you're going to be excommunicated. You'll be given the left foot of fellowship. And no longer will you be accepted into the high echelons on the third floor in Springfield, Missouri. Should never have said those things. Should never have said those things. I mean, some of it, most of it is probably true, but you should never have said it. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I was praying for people back in the 90s. Come and have a look what she's got in the bag. Hmm. Mint notebook. I was praying for people, <laughs> sorry, just check it out. I was wondering what was in that bag. And uh, I was praying for people and there was no room in the church so we took them out on the field. But little did we know that there was pockets of fire ants. And so I prayed for people and there was probably a thousand people laid hands on them. And suddenly groups of people started jumping up and down and somebody said the fire of God. And I looked and I said, no, there's no anointing. No, no, the anointing. I said, no, did you see they're scratching at themselves? And it was fire ants that had crawled right up and started biting them all over. So peop some people got touched. Do you know how many times I've been in churches and prayed for fire ants to invade the place? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, have you been blessed this morning? Yes. This afternoon, have you been blessed? Well, don't miss the night. It's going to be off the chain. And then I'll have to leave you. We love you so much. Do you have any word that you would like to give? Oh, you in white. Like I promise you, if I saw in the middle of the night, I would think an angel was appearing to me. Stand, stand up and tell them what you need to tell them. Angel Kofi. Tonight at 7 p.m., make sure you get here early. Seats are running out, parking spaces are running out. So get doors open at 6 p.m. Tomorrow, tomorrow, 10 a.m., see you. God bless you. We love you.